to episode 11 of the Tap Haven Podcast, where we talk about good games and good drinks. And Eric's mic goes out, and we can't hear him talk. Oh my gosh. Wait, what? No, it says you can you hear me. Yeah, we hear you now. There was a weird, you, very brief moment. Oh, uh, oh, I wonder if it caught on the recorder. We'll, we'll find out. Maybe. We'll find out Later. when I post it. Yeah, no, not worried about it. <laughs> as we just found out that all of the current episodes have Eric as a mirror. Not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. I fixed it. I fix fixed it. it. So, we're good. All right. We'll see if we fix the rest. <laughs> All right. Yeah. We'll see how the rest the of this unreal. goes. The unreleased but, ones. Um, how's y'all's week going? It, As Andy, we... you want to go first? <laughs> it's, uh, well, you know, I live my life one day at a time because that's all I can remember. <laughs> wow. So, a, he's a goldfish as a human. <laughs> and today has been a day. Uh-oh. Very, uh, very frustrating day. I'll share a little bit. Uh, so I recently had some very good fortune. And by that, I mean, my first ever short has reached 10,000 views. Sick. Huge. Not, Living the life. It, like, it took off like 12 hours. Sorry, it took off like 24 hours after it was released and had like re- rested basically like you know it looked like it was done and then suddenly it just took off huh. um but you know what comes with that is uh the you know not so great part of the internet so uh that was oh. fun yeah but you know that's to be expected but yeah, what I wasn't mean, expected is that the internet is growing up because there were people that I are saw this. random that i don't know i saw this who came to protect me basically they're yeah. like, they like fuck you dude get out of here yeah, get, leave him alone you're the yeah. asshole and i was like oh that's cool like that's pretty great uh and then so there's an interesting thing there's more comments than people can see in public i'll get these like notifications saying that someone commented and then it's not there presumably they got like either deleted or moderated yeah Ooh. and a couple of them were very obviously the person that reported me for leaking someone's private information. So I've got my first official email from YouTube saying, take it down or fix it in 48 hours. We're going to review it. And I'm like, what? And what's so, private information? Ah, Not no, like, obviously don't reveal there's, private information. There's no but private I information. See, there's I didn't no see private anything. information. There's a gamer tag. There's a game oh. of some random person who, if you think about it, their name is like something 1597, which typically means they're a cheater because not many people put four digits right after their name. Right? You know? It typically no means choice. they've been, been banned no before. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. I mean, maybe that's, maybe it's a date that they really like, but it was like 1492, mm. which might actually be a date. But so now I'm dealing with that because, mm. uh, you know, some people, all, all I can find when I research it is hearsay. People are saying, like, you're going to be fine. It, it, don't worry about it. It's, it's just a gamer tag. That's not actually personal information. But YouTube doesn't actually say anything. Like, I, I did a decent amount of research. There's I, no. I feel like there's enough people who are personalities on YouTube that have their gamer tags on and they play with other people whose tags are also viewable in lobbies that don't get that kind of. That's what I was thinking too, especially because it's not like every game has the uh, streamer mode thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's probably fine. Uh, some people, the worry is that like some automated process just takes down the video. Uh, you can always do a claim. Like you can always do a uh, reverse claim yeah. essentially on that if that happens though. And then somebody will come and look at it at that mm. point. Yeah. One person had suggested like, take off the last frame of your video one frame so that if there is some sort of automation that's just checking to see if you made any edits it's there i yeah. think we did yeah, yeah, yeah. oh I, I i might do that because the other option is like blurring out their gamer tag but i'm like you're not gonna it's do the gamer tag that edit. you're anonymous yeah. <laughs> like no. <laughs> now i will say it's easy to blur it out though in the um with the, the new youtube, YouTube editor? editor yeah yeah um, yeah so i mean i might play around with it if i yeah, you're up to it just because it'd be good to know how to do it. Yeah, but 
but yeah, that's that was a little uh, just annoying. You know, it's like I'm not even making money from doing this yet, and now I already have to deal with the bullshit. I mean, dude, there's there's, up, there's yeah. been a lot of that shit this week. I mean, um, there's this relatively small streamer, and I'm I'm gonna avoid giving any names because um, mm -hmm. obviously uh, she's had enough trouble through this whole situation, but essentially streamer on twitch pretty new not a lot of subscribers and she went through and was just doing a normal stream and this random guy came in and started essentially berating other people in her chat and like talking all this nonsense and all this crazy stuff and essentially harassing her to the point of tears right terrible situation and uh, she's a new streamer, so she doesn't have all the tools at her disposal to be able to handle this situation yet, at least quickly. Yeah, like she doesn't and have like, moderators that are like yeah, catching things before she even sees it. Exactly. It. Exactly. Yeah, like the worst thing. Yeah. And so that throws you off. But it turns out that this guy, at the end of all this nonsense, is like, oh, haha. I was just doing this all for video, all this kind of stuff, you know, and no. all this. Oh, it's and all so, just content. <laughs> and here's the crazy stuff, man. Here's what's wrong with like the, the ecosystem that is streaming right now is that this guy then went and posted that video even after she said, no, I'm going to content strike it. I do not give you permission to use my clips in your clips, like in your video. And she goes... And looks at his channel and he's posted the video. Not only has he posted the video, he blurred out because he went on and said, like, apparently on his stream, he was like, oh, I'll blur it out. And then she can't do anything type of deal. Wow. And then it's on stream. Uh, he was on stream, like doing recordings and stuff like this, uh, as far as I know. But he goes in, uploads the video. And there's a few frames where her name isn't. Uh, blurred, blurred out. out. But he yeah. has millions of subscribers. This is like a big YouTuber. Wow. And so now, wow. not only did she have that bad experience, every 12-year-old and child that watches this guy now goes to her stream, goes to her thing. She's now having to like constantly deal with beration that because sucks. of this whole situation. And it's like, man... And uh, just because I know this uh, streamer won't really care if I were to name him, but Asmund Gold talks about this a bit and is like, dude, this is just nonsense. Like, this guy is garbage. Just garbage. But at the same time, he's like, but look, this is this is this is what this you is, get into. This is this is, is going to be you, everybody, everyone who does content creation kind of has to go through that. And it's tough. So it's definitely the toughest thing in content creation for sure is like dealing with those types of situations hard. Yeah, it is really weird. Cause like, uh, you know, a lot of seasoned creators will tell you, don't read the comments. You know, that's just, yeah, you're just going to mess up your head. It's a bad idea. But as we know, when you have like, you know, zero following, it's like, well, YouTube likes it if you do read the comments and respond to them and yeah. like them and, and yep. interact with them and it, it increases your chances. So it's like, okay, you know, I could see after a certain point, oh, you're actually making money out of this and there's a there's just an insane amount of comments. Now maybe you can have somebody tell you respond to this comment, this comment, this comment, well, and they're filtering it for your monster. And but not even monster. that, you get to deal with the top voted comments, right? Because you can just keep mm -hmm. that page sorted to like top voted comments and you're only going to see the good stuff, right? And so these top creators don't have to sift through it if they don't want to. And Yeah, but, eventually their community sifts through it for them, basically. Essentially, yeah. It's but like, you, you're in, watch. Yeah, but you're entirely right. Like when you're a small content creator and you're going through and doing all this, the YouTube so community wants you to interact. Interacting with the community is part of how YouTube knows to put you into the algo man so you gotta you kind of have to which can suck a lot i was like you can it can yeah. suck 
or it could be really great. But most of the time, it sucks. Yeah. Let's just be real. Humanity is humanity. Speaking of, my week so far has been pretty much an example of how humanity can can suck. Um, there right. has been quite a few shifts in my at my current job that has kind of affected it in a negative sense. So in order to remain anonymous, I'm not going to go ahead and name anything, but just know that I currently <laughs> am very, very, very excited to like be moving out of this job because it is, it is, a, it is an effort right now to go ahead and stay PC at work. Yeah. And I've never had that struggle before. I've never, I've never been in, and, and it's in, um, it's in the, public sector in this in a sense so like i've never had a situation where i've had to like hold back my actual reaction when interacting with my coworkers. yeah this has been the first time where i've been like i'm mad at you but i know if i go off on you it's just it's gonna just make the rest of this really hard so there's that and it's a growing piece uh for just life in general i'm just gonna uh use it as fuel for the fire at this point and just keep on trucking but yeah that's been my week so far yeah yeah oh so, yeah it sounds like both now and i really need a drink so eric what you got because you better hurry it up <laughs> okay well Please. i already started on my uh my comparison i know thing, so yeah, man so ridiculous. we might be Go and this help on my train <laughs> hey we're about to we might actually be, and I haven't looked this up yet, so, and by the time people see this, it's probably not going to be, but we might be the first, like, content creators kind of looking at this, because mm -hmm. this is a brand new whiskey. Exclusive, exclusive. I'm very yeah. curious about this one. I'll have you guys know that I, I think I might know where this is from, and I, I asked our dear host, Eric, to confirm, and, and he ghosted me. So I'm waiting to find ghosted out. Ghosted you? Oh, <laughs> I'm man. just kidding. He probably missed the text. So uh, we are going to get to try the Popcorn Sutton Master Blend Bourbon Whiskey, which mm. you can actually see. This has a wonderful picture of Popcorn Sutton himself. On the, the bottle, he's got like a nice little beard there. Him and Anthony are, are related. Uh, I have a little beard. <laughs> That's yeah. a big old beard. <laughs> so for those of you do, who don't know, the Popcorn Sutton is like the king of moonshine. Oh. And that's his name? Popcorn Sutton? That's his, that's his, as far as I know, that's his name. I don't know if he was born with it. But, oh, it, it, it wasn't. It wasn't. It, Popcorn is his nickname. His name okay, is like, Marvin Sutton. Uh, I will say it. But. Born in the 1940s <laughs> in Maggie Valley. And this guy has done everything moonshine. It is a part of his heritage is the way he used to put it. He's a, a Scots-Irish-American. And he was a descendant of a long line of moonshiners. Which, by the way, moonshine in his world, this was the illegal stuff. The minute you make moonshine legal, it's not moonshine anymore. It's white dog or something else. He was mm -hmm. in the act of moonshine. He's like, I want it yeah. to be dirty. He, he, <laughs> his career was bootlegging in moonshine, man. Like this guy was making alcohol out of his, you know, mm -hmm. backyard, mm -hmm. selling it all over in Tennessee. Right. So. The question that I that I posed to Eric earlier, because I was looking at it, is is this from the Rolling Hills of North Carolina and Tennessee? Because that's literally where I live. Yeah. Ish. Hmm. It's a no. pretty big area. I didn't dox myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I have a it hard is. time finding me here. Yeah, I was about to say, I don't think anybody's finding me. <laughs> Good luck. Heck, but I know where I you live and I have trouble finding you. Like, uh, let's be real. <laughs> I still don't know where you live. <laughs> but you will someday. It costs you like Ten bucks to fly here. <laughs> oh, but, oh. <laughs> but uh, you know, the, the funny thing is, so you're talking about the moonshine. I can literally go outside and look across the way from mountain to mountain, and I can see the biggest moonshiner in the in the area. That's Who's funny. Still, a legitimate moonshiner that 
you don't get his moonshine though because um well they got in trouble once mm. because they were letting too many people buy their supply. Oh wow. and so now they you are you're not getting money. any. Like I'm not getting any now. Now. If no. I live here for 20 years I might get some. Oh jeez. Mm. Mm. And so Sutton did all this stuff me. in his life, but he, he was essentially your neighbor. Yeah. And he, unfortunately, things took a dramatic turn in 2009. And this might be a, just a quick trigger warning for anybody uh, real quick. If you have any problems with harsher subjects in life, I would go away for like 10 seconds or so. Eric, we're drinking bourbon. If people have problems oh, and triggering, why would they be here? They would be drinking the bourbon to not be triggered. <laughs> That's the bourbon's purpose is to de-trigger things. But yeah. All throughout his life, didn't have a lot of jail time, but in 2008, he uh, told an undercover federal officer uh, like a bunch of stuff. He started doing all this stuff and he essentially he got caught in 2009 with all of his moonshine and so now he's looking at a hefty fine and a long amount of jail time oh decent fine but long jail time interesting yeah. and so he <laughs> goes out and unfortunately would- takes his own life to avoid Eesh. jail time okay now That's in doing do that well, I mean, he, he was what, like 60 years old? Yeah, he, I mean, we're, he was born in 1946 to 2009, so we're looking at 63 years old. Um, okay. So he, okay. Did a, he did a lot of this. His 60s and 70s were his prime. That's when he got the nickname Popcorn. Uh, after he frustratingly attacked a bar's faulty popcorn vending machine with a pool cue. Aw, oh, dude, that's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's not the greatest way to get a nickname yep. yeah we call you popcorn because you got way too he soft was frustrated dude started. he he started beating up a popcorn machine with a pool cue like that's how this guy's making alcohol in his backyard drinking it going to the bar drinking some more and beating up machines like this guy was he was living he was living man a life man man of the yeah. got it got it got and it. so his wife after he passed away essentially started to work to try and regain his legacy talk about moonshine talk about all the things he had done in his life in regards to that and she started working with the i i think founder or owner of the old smoky distillery which by the way is one of the largest legal moonshine distilleries in the country and works out of Pigeon Forge or Gatlinburg. And they worked on two different things. Brother. Yes. You just said not five minutes ago that there's no such thing as legal moonshine. There is legal moonshine though. You're right. I said that. They call it moonshine. It is not. It is not actually moonshine. Um, but the, the terms around it, uh, it's kind of muddied in the water at this point, but so they started working on two different releases to essentially have his legacy kind of pass on. One of them is the, the liquor, which is a mash of cane and grain. And that is essentially supposed to be his a hundred proof moonshine type of deal. And then there is this. The blend of straight bourbon whiskeys at 100 proof. Now, we don't know a lot of what's going on in this whiskey outside of that. So I don't have a lot of information to give you. So we're going to kind of have to tread this path on our own, so to say. Well, I can tell you this. It just smells like whiskey. I mean, I guess it smells smells like bourbon. You know what? Yeah, yeah, it smells like bourbon. It's not too hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get... I get a little bit of corn. I get a lot of corn and leather. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm not smelling that. 
Yeah, I, so I, I, now, now I do want to say because, uh, sir, this, I mean, these, these are my own opinions because, uh, the tone in Eric's voice might have given you guys some general uh, thoughts on how we feel about moonshine. In my mind, moonshine shouldn't be illegal. It's a little ridiculous. But I, it's a little ridiculous. To be fair, I think the distilling taxing situation for personal home use is ridiculous. And yeah. That does my not head. mean that I think that anybody should go do it because of legal reasons, but... If someone were to put me on stand, I would argue that maybe that's something that shouldn't be illegal. Eric, no maybe. Stop pussyfooting around. <laughs> okay? It so shouldn't mad. be illegal. So mad. And you didn't imply anything. So mad. You didn't tell anybody to do nothing. You're not a doctor. Guys, I goofed. I went to close my door and my cord tipped over my glass. No, I didn't, what? All, I, didn't my, I didn't put all my whiskey in there. So there's still oh, stuff God. in here. You, there's still you stuff lost in the cup. I just lost some, and now I'm, oh, I'm no. sad. Well, dude, I caught myself. I almost poured the whole thing in again. <laughs> this is one of, for the, those of you watching, this is one of those uh, cases where Eric gave us a little bit extra. Mm -hmm. So yeah. well, way more than one nice. tasting worth. Now, what do you, is oh, it so nice? nice. Do, you, do you get the corn and leather? Or what are you getting on the nose? I'm getting that it doesn't smell bad. Like it doesn't. It's not. It's not like uh, a Woodford's Reserve where it's like eh, that, that doesn't smell too great, too harsh. It, it smells like it is not trying to be anything other than a bourbon. Yeah, it hits agreed. All of yeah. the it hits think, all yeah. the it hits all the scent points. It's like I could see you that. want you want a little bit of pepper is there. You want a little bit of leather is there. You want some corn. It's there. I mean, it's there. Um, I wouldn't say that there's really anything to this that is trying to be uh, a wild card. Now, let's be real. I want you to look dead in the eyes of this man. Do you really think he'd want anything other than the realest of whiskeys? No, absolutely Eric, not. We can't do that. It's backwards for us now. Uh, uh, that just made us all cross-eyed. That, that just means yeah, he's looking the opposite direction. <laughs> Oh my god! I, I'm so confused. That that was a different guy. That wasn't Popcorn Sutton. I don't even recognize that. <laughs> I don't know who that man is. I don't know who that man is. I don't know that man. All right. So I you said I finally... take a straight shot this time, right? Take a straight shot, and then you do the mouth yes. feel, right? You okay. do one. You, you let it pass it straight through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Prime. Mm -hmm. You prime the taste buds, and then you do a Kentucky chew. Matt. We established last time that both of us can remember what happened in that museum where we were educated. Mm -hmm. It is one, I know. I know. one prime chew. I know. It is followed by the good chew. It's okay. Chew. It's okay. Now, okay. I will say my first sip, and even my second sip, pleasant. Yeah. Pleasantly surprised. It's not, mm. once again, there's no, it's a running theme for me. There's no harshness. It's just, this bourbon. is good. It's bourbon. It's yeah. kind of like, uh, it's like if you like bourbon, just like you like a burger, and you're like, I want a burger. That's a it's bourbon. Like, that's just that's a burger. That's a bourbon. That's yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. good. It's not like it's there's not, not any like extreme heat or anything. Yeah. I there's, mean the hundred no proof really does it justice, honestly. It's not a oh, yeah. 80, 90 proof. It's not too low. But it's also getting a little bit up there. It's it's getting that fifty percent, you know, A B V, which is really mm -hmm. nice. There's no real fruity tone to anything, which is fine, honestly. Yeah, this one um, doesn't get like chocolate, floral, fruity, none of that. You might you might be able to like say it like a dark, dark, dark chocolate, like a bit like a like a baker's chocolate mm. where like it's yeah. but that's that's literally just the um alcoholic chemical. Now I will say there is this little bit of evolution that I think is really nice, but I want to make it clear. It goes from this corn sweetness and leather for me mm -hmm. into once that kind of settles back, it brightens up and gets like pepper with tobacco. And then yeah. it has this pepper tail to it that kind of lasts for about 10 seconds. 
which which is a nice little evolution. It has an arc to it, which is uh, pleasant for what could be just a two year whiskey here. You know, uh, this yeah, I mean, this is this is a tasty bourbon. You know, the only thing that I can see that's like. This is very subjective, I think. The only thing that is not just like, yeah, is it's pale. It's not, it is, it's not very rich in yeah, color. This is not it, a rich colored whiskey. It, it's almost got a peach, like a light peach color to it more than anything else. It's like a little brownish, obviously. It's got some red tone in there. It's still obviously a bourbon, just yeah. like a burger. It's still obviously a burger. Yeah. It's just not like, uh, it's not, it's average. Yeah. Right. Oh, you definitely get the leather off the top. Like, oh. I, I, I don't have anything else to say about it. It's a bourbon, guys. Yeah. I like it's it. A, it's, a, it's a bourbon. So, Nat, like, tell me, you walk into the yeah, store. Ah, you... oh, shit. I feel like I'm, I'm going to And you go here. in and they tell you this is the only bourbon you can buy. What price does it have to be for you to walk out with the bourbon that day? I've already written down my uh, my ratings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Write down your ratings if you I'm don't want to be influenced. I'm not getting I'm not getting influenced by nobody today. I like I also, it. I'd pay sixty bucks for that. Ooh. Ooh, I already wrote down my price too before he said anything. <laughs> Wait, sixty bucks. And what and what would you rate this? Uh, this is like a. I think this is a as a five, guys. This is your five. This is I like this your is gold is, standard is, bourbon, a, middle a, of the road. A, no, not gold standard. Gold oh, standard Eric, is like Eric, five. It's supposed to be average, brother. Be average. This is a bourbon. Period. Remember, remember, Nat and I know how one to ten works. Eric is different. <laughs> different. <laughs> Eric's gonna give this a three. I have an exponential <laughs> scale. Exactly. Exactly. As, as somebody who is not exposed to the as exposed to the world of bourbons and whiskeys and spirits, just in general, as you are, Eric, or or you, Anthony, because let's be real, I really don't drink as much as y'all. Um, I would say that this is almost quintessentially a definition of if you want a bourbon that does not taste bad. And gives you an experience that you are looking for for a bourbon. This is it. Now, the only thing that may throw that off for me is really that price. If I hear something absurd, it's going to change my rating because I really don't feel like you should be you should feel that you have to dive in so deep into this to just get the bare minimum. You know what I mean? That's a that's a bad way of saying it. I don't want this kind of taste to be held at a pedestal that's not reachable without making extreme dividend spent expenses. That's what oh. I'll say. Oh. Hey, that makes sense to me. Anthony, you walk into your local dealer. They only have one whiskey. Well, what price are you popcorn. buying it for? <laughs> local dealer. Oof. Uh, sorry, I'm distracted now. Well, uh, as most of y'all will know, I regularly drink Woodford Reserve as my go-to, but I think I've given that a, a three over the over the over the days. Mm -hmm. And I always forget. I always think it's worth like forty-five bucks. It's actually like thirty-seven dollars. So I'm kind of shocked right now. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, I was like fifty dollars, but then I was like, actually, no, more like sixty. So I was about to be the same as Nat, but I wrote down. Oh, this is going to be difficult. Oh, Y'all can't buddy, see it because the, the lighting is terrible. There it is. Sixty nine dollars. Uh, Sixty nine. I added nine dollars. We're definitely the, that kid. For the memes. We're definitely that kid. <laughs> I added oh it God. for the memes. But not only for the memes, for the story, because. The injustice that was done to Popcorn Button. What's his name? Sutton. <laughs> wow. Sutton. Popcorn, Popcorn Sutton. Sutton. I feel he, you know, was just an old man and they wanted to put him away for making alcohol. 
because that's such a terrible thing to do. Yeah, uh, he's, got, he's got some fantastic bourbon though. I like that's a kick. Like I feel it. Yeah, like it's mm. it's it like it's like very much a legless moment of like I feel it in my pinky, but like I can I'm like oh this is the first time I've had a sip from this glass that is and mind you I've spilt this a little bit and I've been like oh okay <laughs> so if you like again I'm I, this is a five go ahead oh and I don't know if y'all saw it but yeah I also gave it a five. Oh, you okay. gave it a five? What? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking basically the exact same thing that said. It's, it's, it is a bourbon. It is an average bourbon. Mm-hmm. Five is average. And on top of all that, I do think it's funny that I think Nat and I gave the last week's like a four and a four and a half mm-hmm. or somewhere around mm-hmm. there. And it's interesting because like it smelled really good and there's like a lot of interesting, unique things about it. But overall, it's like, yeah, you're trying to do a lot, but yeah, you're not like hitting not that special. Yeah. yeah, so it's kind of funny that this is like doing less, but know. doing we it. Give better. it a higher rating, yeah. even though, yeah, it's like I, yeah. I, you know, I won't speak to that until after I hear everything. But yeah, so I'll I'll go with mine, and this is, this is a fun one. the The trip where I got this one was a fun trip, and. I got to get this from the distillery itself, or or at least the Old Smoky Mountain Distillery. I've, I'm I, very scared for my wallet. That's and <laughs> so they they actually had like a wall of these. When I went there, they had oh. just released it. So I got this. It was the first weekend they had it in the store. And uh, funnily mm-hmm. enough, mm-hmm. Uh, we had some friends there, and they were trying all the moonshines. They have a bunch of whiskeys and they have flavored a lot of flavored whiskeys old smoky mountain does tons mm-hmm. of flavored whiskeys and if you buy five of them you get a free bottle and this Sorry, this was, was not a giggle this was, <laughs> this was the free <laughs> bottle actually no now, way i think oh. i think you can get this if i remember correctly and uh, funnily enough i can't find this online at all but i'm pretty sure it was a 65 dollar bottle of whiskey. let's go so now I think that if I went into a store, the only unfortunate thing for me is that I, I think this would do so much better in the $40 range. Not oh, that it's bad. Kill. It would slay. But I think Absolutely the $40 decimate. range would be so nice for this whiskey because I think at the $40 range, like you're saying, this has a lot of the notes that just like the... The bourbon drinkers of the world, like they, they want to be able to go and enjoy a whiskey just like this. And I think a for a whiskey in general, but okay, but, yeah, okay, okay. I see yeah, what you mean. I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. But forty dollars, oh, like this would be nice. called a truck a car. <laughs> okay, a bourbon. They want to, they want a bourbon like this. They're valid, valid. I accept the criticism. <laughs> oh my but god! I think. At the $40 price range, I, I'll probably walk out with a bottle of this again. But I think from my rating, I'm a little bit more judicial than y'all are. I don't think this hits my rating five only because I think there's a little bit too much tobacco and pepper in the flavor profile rather than the oak and vanilla that I typically want from my standard middle of the road bourbon. And what so, you're saying is that it doesn't have enough pinky for you. You can't just flip your pinky out while you drink it. That's yeah. what you're saying. What you're really saying is that you're not a real man who likes real bourbon. Because what I'm hearing is that you're just you're just desecrating that popcorn's liquor. Yeah. Now, 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 I remember yeah. back whenever popcorn no. beating up that machine. Now, that you better is put some respect valid. on that man's name. Hey. You know what? Yeah. Popcorn Sutton had something going for it. All right. And I think this sits no, solidly at a, at a forty dollar <laughs> price range at a three point five for me. I think is about where it sits. I I I I like I like the Sagamore Rye from last week better than I like this particular whiskey. Now you know we what this have is? mutant. <laughs> Mutant. <laughs> we have a mutant. This man, oh, this man like Princess Bourbon. 
He likes them soft bourbon. He likes them soft bourbon. He likes them soft bourbon. Take him to bed and read him a story. You want to read us a story, boy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad Nat's here because if Nat wasn't here, I'd walk yeah. out. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Your rating, <laughs> is, I, your rating is fair in the sense that, like, I have spoken on this podcast about wanting a more nuanced experience. I really feel though those nuanced experiences exist after five. Like I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. And here's the thing. I, I think I already have my five, which is the, the, and I've said this before. I don't think it should be the podcast five because I don't think it's a five we can all, that we might all agree on, but the red breast 12 is, is my five. It's a fairly affordable whiskey in the same price range as this. It's an Irish whiskey. It's not a bourbon. But we'll speak later. <laughs> and we'll that's speak on that's one, one that later. we're gonna cover. We're gonna we're yeah, gonna cover yeah, the yeah, Red yeah. Breast Twelve so that they they can enjoy it with me, and we'll see where we all land on that episode. Um, he assumes we'll enjoy it, <laughs> right? <laughs> Little do they know they've already had it and enjoyed it. <laughs> so he thinks. So he thinks. <laughs> <laughs> But we'll have it again we and do an official things. rating on it. They might revolt just to spite me. It's true. It's true. The mutiny is at hand. Oh my god. So this is uh what is the parts of the Caribbean episode where Jack's no longer the captain? Oh yeah. Uh, Barbosa uh, takes over. Yep. Two no, three. No. Three. Yeah, I three. Can't remember. three. Yeah. Three. The- Barbosa is in charge at one point, right? Yeah, that, yeah. that happened. Three yeah. uh, Barbosa kits. The did y'all know? Back, I think. I I think there's a new parts of the Caribbean coming out. Don't, no, don't do that. Don't. I hope they don't mess it up like the last one because last one was kind of weird. weird. It was a trilogy. Is that, is that the one? This, except that it was supposed to end. At three. I agree. It was supposed to end at one. I agree. I agree we all, too. We all know. See, we all see that, Wait, right? Did they like, release really a new was. one and have like Jack Sparrow yeah. as a young guy? And they did like that the the weird the fifth wait, what? one. That wasn't Jack Sparrow. They I know, I know. Wait, no, no, no. They had like a they had a one off. They did a prequel. I thought. Yeah, they had like a prequel with a young Jack Sparrow, and he yeah. his fa- it's it's his face it's, on oh, a right. different person's body, and they like yeah. do the the tracking and superimpose Johnny Depp's face onto another person. And he has no speaking lines at all. He just shows up in a cl- in like a scene, and he's yeah. like doing like Jack Sparrow stuff or whatever. It's, it's is this a new movie? Is this even out? The prequel? The prequel's been out. It's called Captain Jack Sparrow. Really? Yes. The, the prequel's know, been out for a bit. It wasn't I based think- around Cap. It wasn't based around uh, Sparrow though. It was based around something else. I think it was based around the Legend of the Black Pearl. It was huh. Pirates of the Caribbean five. This was the one where he did it. Yeah, four, four. It goes four, five, and then six yeah. is whenever they tried to go ahead and come back to the timeline again. Yeah, so it, it was yeah. it was definitely five where they had the young Jack Sparrow. Yeah, and no, they've had. Is it six? Are there six movies no, or seven? Five movies? is Dead Men Tell No Tales. Well, uh, I, let me let me so, say it says so it's it, one it two says. three. Okay, let's do this. One two three is the original yeah. trilogy. Dead men tell no tales. They have the young the young guy. Yeah, the come in. One. Yeah, the fourth one is like the weird one where like they tried to start another story off with like mermaids or something. And then five is that prequel that where they had the young Jack Sparrow. And then they have a sixth one that was tr- trying to go back to the original trilogy that had Johnny Depp in it. I and don't Johnny Depp and uh, they don't have a sixth the film yet. Barbosa. They don't have a sixth they film do. yet. They no, they do no. not. And Wait, I guarantee the you, Dead Men, Dead Men Tell No Tales does not have a young Jack Sparrow in it. It is normal Jack Sparrow, and there is a new young actor that's supposed to take Orlando Bloom's position, and he does a terrible job. And there's a new young actress that's supposed to take. Is it based um, on curses? No, 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 no. Look up, look up. Uh, young Jack Sparrow, Dead Men Tell No Tells. It's there's a scene in there where they do it. It's I, in there. I, I'm, yeah, I'm it's looking in there. at it. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there just one scene? It's when you were talking about it, you made me think that it was the whole movie. No, 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 no. no, no. no. There's like a scene. there's like a flashback scene or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. probably happened. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like really weird. <laughs> it's like 
It is a little weird. Dad, I'm sorry. I'm going to have some of the popcorn whiskey bourbon. I hope you I hope you forgive me, but I, I need to have more. I'm so need sorry. You need to so get some sorry. of that whiskey in you. I'm so sorry. So, I, spilled, I spilled it in your son's greedy, but I, I oh. just need to have some more. I'm sorry. So, so we already kind of went down the rabbit hole here. Anthony, what, what shows were you interested in last week? Like, I feel like we left off on, a, on an odd tone because mm-hmm. Nat had to abandon us for, you know, life, I guess. And I had to eat <laughs> and live and love on my wife. I'm so sorry. Whoa, whoa, TMI, brother. TMI. <laughs> Sir, you need to stop going that far after I say things. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> yeah, go. yeah, yeah. Last uh, go, last time I I actually had a list of shows that I wanted to bring up. So one show that my wife and I had been watching is like, as she will say herself, it's like one of the only strictly dramas that we've ever cared to watch because we don't and we don't really enjoy the uh, you know, oh this happened this happened type of drama. Like if it's not like sci-fi or actiony, it's like eh, whatever. It's called The Morning Show, and it's got uh, Jennifer Aniston in it, and um, I can't remember oh, her name. Her this name, is the one with Blonde. Steve Carroll. I like. I haven't seen oh, much yeah, about he's it briefly in it, but there's like a great scene with Steve Carroll in it that you know, like yeah. started popping off in the TikTok yeah. YouTube short world. Well, it's interesting because it, it gives you like some background story on what it's like to theoretically in this show run a actual legacy media company that is trying to deliver the news and stuff and all of the insane politics and drama that goes on in the background and so i think we just finished the latest season but that that's worth a watch uh it's Mm. just it's very neat it's it's very compelling and um wow i feel like there was something a little bit more important about it but you know, it, it, it's neat because they're talking about things that happened like two years ago. Like in the latest season, it's like COVID just happened and they just got out of COVID, mm. right? Or, or like COVID happens at the end of one season. At the beginning of the next season, it's been like a year and a half, two years since COVID happened. And now there's flashbacks to COVID time. And, and it's just neat because they'll bring up like very real and serious issues that we're encountering and potentially forgetting about and need to you know kind of bring back up and fix yeah Yeah. and and so it's it can be very intense um another one is very neat and it's called masters of the air it's a new uh show with six parts i think and it's like a one and done thing it's the first time i've ever seen world war ii not dogfighting but basically battleships in the air i didn't realize that i can't remember it's like a b-52 or something it's a a bomber yeah Yeah. and i think there's like 10 guys that crew it and there's so many turrets like they have 360 degrees you know around up like like a full sphere of coverage with their with their turrets and all of these ships stick together and they become like almost unbeatable of course they are beatable but like if a fighter pilot tries to take them down as they do they're met with a barrage of turrets from every single plane in the fleet trying to shoot them down and it's just really interesting to like see that side of it because when you go and play a video game where you've got ships like that like star citizen is trying to do world war ii dogfighting in space right well, now I'm actually seeing how that could be. And I'm like, oh, that, I want to play that. That's cool. Like, you got a fighter coming at you and they can mess you up real fast, but also you can mess them up real fast. Like, that's, yeah, it's really cool. neat. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. Now we get to the more interesting one. So, Eric, as some of y'all might know, was recently at my humble abode. And we started talking about things like uh, ancient apocalypses, uh, because there's literally a show on Netflix called Ancient Apocalypse. And he pointed me to a YouTube series that debunks the ancient apocalypse. Now, I really enjoyed watching the YouTube series that debunked it. And what I 
very much enjoyed is that at some point in time the the guy i think his name is like milo minute minute man something yeah. like that milo rossi um, uh the mini minute man on youtube great the mini yeah minute man. yeah so he's very entertaining he does a good job for the most part but at one point he points you towards uh someone that he met and conversed with that is actually intelligent and or intelligent enough to argue the side that he is debunking and so he de debunked the debunker, you know, or whatever he puts yeah. it. He debunked the he debunked the 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 bunker official. No, the official, because you're saying that the Basically, scientist is trying to prove that this ancient mm-hmm. apocalypse has happened, and he is arguing against him, saying no, it's not possible, right? Yeah. Well, so yeah, so Milo, the YouTuber. Is mm-hmm. saying no and, and debunking, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, while and then at one point, Milo sh- uh, shoots us over to another guy who created a YouTube video to debunk Milo. So he's supporting okay. the original theory, right? Okay. And so you know he'll agree with a lot of things. He'll be like, "Yeah, yeah, some of this stuff doesn't make sense, but you glossed over this, and you." you're wrong about this and you didn't even research this because if you do you can find out that this is obviously true and i really appreciated that because while milo did a great job of trying to debunk things there was several things where i'm like you just said that this is like a debate where you just like oh he said this i say that done it's like where you didn't prove him wrong Mm -hmm. you're just saying it so it's very interesting because um in the end, Milo didn't actually like debunk anything. Uh, he mostly tried to kind of say that. So Graham Hancock was the guy in Ancient Apocalypse. He was the host. He's not a scientist. Uh, he's a fiction writer. Yeah. So he just writes novels and tries to get people to think about the fact that it's possible that there's more to the to our human history than meets the eye. Right. And so it was interesting because it it did end up boiling down to like Milo as an archaeologist would say, like, archaeologists don't hate you. And then a few episodes, he'd say, we don't hate you because you're wrong. We hate you because you're annoying (laughs) or something like that. So So he was like literally like doing that. So it was interesting. Overall, I think the unfortunate thing is that he didn't debunk. Uh the theory and also i mean at one point he glosses over the fact that he's like oh yeah there's a so long story short supposedly twelve and a half thousand years ago there was an impact that like reset the globe and if we had any form of intelligent human civilization that got started over too right well there the biggest thing is that there's a what I think they call a black matte layer in the geography of the world where you can just see a black line and that black line proves that the world was like on fire, right? And, and they use that to prove that the dinosaurs were wiped out by a major impact themselves. And okay. so, when, and that's, the, that's like one of the interesting ones. He brings that up and he's like, yeah, this is great. But then he's just like moves on. Uh, and it's just like a little, it's a little weird, you know? Um, well, I mean, in his uh, last episode, he talks about how the uh, young dryad, uh, dryad, dryad, dryas, dryad, the younger, younger dryas, younger dryas impact definitely happened. So, like, his, I mean, Milo even says it. His strongest supporting argument for what he's saying is the last episode. Like, the last episode has the things that have the most proof, mm-hmm. and he even goes on to talk about how he wished that there had been more focus on that and the mysteries surrounding that and like what evidence we have of that happening and what the side effects of that could be rather than essentially lying about dates or a lot of the other things, which doesn't really help Graham Hancock's story or argument at all, right? Yeah, well, so, like, I mean, there's a few things where, I'm not sure how to put this, but, like, the whole topic on both sides is just too vague, right? Well, I don't know if it's too vague, because there's, like, even Milo goes into this, 
in that we have evidence of so many civilizations that are so much older than 12,500 years ago. And we have so much uh, like overwhelming amount of evidence of these civilizations. And yet we have no evidence really of a, a globe spanning, you know, high technology civilization. But we have all of this evidence all over the globe of other civilizations that definitely weren't globe spanning and didn't have these high levels of technology from well before 12,000. And so I think a lot of Milo's point is that everything that he says, at least in the first seven out of eight episodes in Ancient Apocalypse, the evidence that he puts forward is kind of misleading. He lies about a lot of dates when we very obviously have evidence so, against I, I, those dates. I have to step in here because he doesn't lie about dates. He proposes dates. Yeah, but I he think proposing this, this, dates that we have evidence against is misleading uh, at best. He brings up that this is what current modern archaeology says the date is for this thing. Because of X, Y, and Z, I think it could be this old. And preemptively, he already said, I'm not a scientist. This is what I'm looking at. This is why I think this. Why don't we explore it? That's all he's saying. But if a lot of and his so argument it, is based in, on that date, it doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Like it, It's not an argument. That's the thing that you're missing, is that he is not an official. He has admitted to that. He, his only goal is to bring awareness and to make people ask questions and to get people to look into it. And he is doing a great job of that is bringing publicity to something very important. I don't know if Ancient Apocalypse does a good job at coming across with that narrative comparatively to the narrative that Milo talks about at the end of distrusting the science that we're currently doing. And there's a lot of good arguments Milo makes in his very last episode of why that's a dangerous thing it to so do. There, there's no distrust of the current accepted stuff. Uh, what there is is him. I mean, up Graham that Hancock in no every single looking, episode talks about it, how current our archaeologists don't want you to know. They don't give you this information. They don't believe this. They don't think this is possible, right? A lot and of his Milo goes to prove him right because Milo goes and brings up those things that he's saying and he goes, that's not possible. For instance, there's like in the first episode, there's a place where there could very well be lava tubes underneath this ancient structure or, uh, and it might just be a hill that people put rocks on. But because he's like, it's probably lava tubes, there's no reason for us to look in there. And meanwhile, yes, because there's lava tubes, you don't know that they didn't have access to it. He's not saying that they built those tubes. He's saying, they're right there. We should go check it out. And he's upset because we know it's there. Why aren't we looking? And the same thing happens in Egypt. We know there's things there. Why aren't we looking? So it's not like, and, and Milo constantly argues, oh, you know, I'd love to go and do that stuff, but we don't have the funding. We don't have the money. Like, we can't go and look for these things. He's not asking. I mean, he, he, he does. Everyone wishes that we would get more funding for, like, looking out in the water where uh, theoretically civilizations would be just underwater now due to the sea level rise. But all of these places where we already know there's stuff that we can learn from, we aren't looking at. And it's not like it costs a ton of money to go and open that door. It also it, doesn't cost a lot of money to go ahead and inject any form of stimulus into education, but you don't see that happening either. Yeah, it's true. I mean, yeah. I don't disagree with that, that aspect of it. I, I definitely think the idea and the narrative of like, we should ask questions and think about s different solutions. I think it's more that 
in watching both Ancient Apocalypse and Milo Ross, uh, Rossi's response, I think there is a lot of what I would consider negative language and active targeting language that Graham Hancock uses to make his story sound better that also makes you think about current science so, scientists in a negative light. And I, I think he does that intentionally it is, to it is sell very his show. It is very, that is, that's a conspiracy. That you is just, not a conspiracy. You, that Think is because about you have how he no talks about proof of that and you're not taking into consideration that this mm. man has been in this exact situation for the past like 30 40 years and he has been constantly met with uh negative feedback from the scientists he has people constantly bashing him telling him he's an idiot and not backing off when it turns out that he says some things that end up being right and so, yeah, he's upset. And I think it is conspiratorial to believe that someone is doing something just for the money. Just because someone's making money doing something doesn't mean they're doing it just for the money. Okay, that's valid. And, and, and that is He might not be doing it for the money. But even if he's not doing it for the money, I think spreading, in my opinion, just my opinion, I think that spreading that towards of negativity towards the, the scientists and science community as a whole, without diving into the details more granularly than he does in his show, is also disingenuous. And I don't feel that he does a good job of that in Ancient Apocalypse. And if the narrative was what you are saying, which I, in my opinion, Based on what I saw in Ancient Apocalypse, I think you're giving him the benefit of the doubt. I don't think, I didn't get the narrative that you're telling me. It did not feel like that was what he was saying. And your narrative sounds way better than what I got from the show. That's I, all that I, I would say. I listen to interviews where he has explained it, and you can see, like, you can hear the pain in his voice when he's talking about he, he just sounds tired. And like look, when you hear him just talking to someone else, he's a tired old man. He's tired of people telling him he's wrong and telling him that he is a scientist that knows nothing. He's like, I'm not a scientist. He's like, I'm constantly telling people, I'm not a scientist. I just want y'all to look at this. And that and is I want valid. Scientists to prove it right or wrong. Look, that's, that's valid. But you, tries to do. you don't get but that in the show, he, though. You can't, you, here's the thing. Here's the thing I would say. I haven't seen those interviews. I am not even arguing that you're wrong in what his outlook is. All that I'm getting at is that Ancient Apocalypse alone as a singular show, which is what 90% of people are experiencing when they look into Graham Hancock now, that show I mean, doesn't give that same narrative, even we, if his we, interviews do. We have like proof and credence towards his argument that so he says you know the scientists in general are against me they they, they are against changing the status quo they're against updating their textbooks to say that they were wrong about history and it's actually like this where else does something like that happen oh i i don't know history books about the history of the united states and how it occurred you know being written by the victor like it's the same thing so what is, that's, is that's, occurring is him lashing out against human nature to preserve their own ego that's fair but look at milo rossi even talks about this in his debunk in that a lot of scientists that believed that way they haven't been practicing since like the 60s and 70s. The current age of scientists are not the same. They aren't the same people that were doing Dude, that. Literally, like within the past five years, there was a dig in the United States and they found like some, you know, normal Native American stuff. And then they were told to stop. And a young dude, like a young 20 year old buck that just came out of school was like, I'm going to dig a little more. He was not allowed to. He was not supposed to. He found stuff dating the United States occupancy to way beyond what anybody ever thought. And he got in trouble. Like, 
The he reason got, why like, he got in trouble is not because he dug to go ahead and find more truth. The reason why he got in trouble is because he went up, up against sanctions against a Native American burial, probably, uh, probably ant- uh, some form of relic for, from Native American uh, bygones that America has s- since then tried to preserve chances are the reason wasn't because that he was finding things that he wasn't supposed to be finding it was because he was in a place that he wasn't supposed to be because he was digging no no he was supposed to be there no this was an official dig this was an archaeological dig he got a he got he got it digging everything up people he got it this is a whole team of people they finished digging everything up they got all of the artifacts out of the ground and then he chose to dig deeper even though they are not supposed to, because guess what? There's no reason to do that because we know that humans weren't here. And then he but goes and proves that that's wrong. That doesn't make any sense. Cause so how do they five, find Native American relics and or anything that they needed to pull out? Because first off, once you pull that out, that area is no longer sanctioned to, to America. You can't touch anything there because it belongs to the people that originally lived there. The reason why he was not allowed to do anything else with that is because those objects that they pulled off of that res- that area now sanctions that entire area to be Native American land. Like you don't touch stuff that belongs to cultures that have been eradicated by the by the uh current uh people in power. Like the reason why there's people who are going to give you pushback on that is not because you are seeing things that you're not supposed to see is because you are treading upon people's history that you are no longer allowed to touch. Well, okay, that's the reason why what they're getting. What they found was just arrowheads. Like it wasn't anything that says, oh, this is definitely Native American. Arrowheads aren't Native American. That is human. But it's in a oh, okay, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just saying, go like, ahead. Go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. If we had the story up, we could find out for sure. I'm sure. Yeah, I was trying to see if I could find what story, but there's there have been a few, so I don't know um, which one yeah, it would have it been. Pushed, I think it pushed like the United States occup United States occupancy back like eighty thousand years or something like that, instead of what was originally you know the accepted number right mm. but yeah it's just it's just weird things like that and that and then there's like specific things in Egypt where we have technology to do like lidar and whatnot with to look underground and map things out without damaging it whatsoever but they choose not to literally open a door to look in it because they want to preserve it and so it's like there's theories that there's like a underground tunnel that connects one thing to another but we're not allowed to prove it because we're not allowed to use the technology to check it and that just doesn't make sense why why would they do that the only reason people do that sort of thing is to protect their ego to protect the books they've written I don't think that's the only that's, reason. I, I think that's a, a huge assumption on what their thought it's, process is. It's not an assumption. Why? What, what reason do you have to stop someone from using a system that is non-invasive to try to learn more about an archaeological site? Money. Yeah, money. Like, How are they making money? They're making money by selling their textbooks, by selling their version of history. They're making money by spending it on other things. Like, I... Yeah, I don't think they're I, getting well, the money to do these things. They don't put money into this stuff unless it makes them money. Yeah. D- like, looking into exists. pyramids and stuff like that just doesn't make money. It doesn't make money. Like, <laughs> the people that I, wanted I'm not, to I'm look not gonna at it. This. I'm not going to soapbox this, but education from knowledge and look at it knowledge you can look at the way that we communicate now and what the money that we put into ai and the refining of that process and how they communicate and analyze and um generate a human to ai banner and look at how we invest that same amount of money into any form of human intelligence any form of students uh any form of education pushing the current level of human intelligence 
it's non-existent compared to where we push money in AI because AI makes money. Humans don't. The, the I feel act like we're of talking about completely different things now. We really aren't, though, because no, I'm you're, saying you're, that you're questioning I'm why they don't that, have money. No, no, that's not what I'm asking. I, I, I'm saying I have a device. I mm. ask the Egyptianologists, may I use this non-invasive device that we have proven won't harm anything to do some research? They say no. How are you getting There's that no, device from wherever it is, wherever it exists? I'm bringing it with me, with my team, with my money. Not trying to make money, trying to spend money on a research effort. And you are asking what, to clear the space for that investigation to happen, correct? Not necessarily. So you're going to let random passerbys go by your probably multi-million dollar device to go, that's analyzing your statute with the possibility of them being tampering with it because they have specific emotions towards that statue. You're now looking at hiring a police guard to go ahead and make sure that your machine does not get damaged. Where are you getting the funds and the public a wherewithal to go ahead and hire the correct I just don't understand why you're coming up with so many excuses not I'm not to learn. coming up with excuses that these is are, these are excuses to prevent these, people from learning that is the from thought process that goes pushing. into making those things real like I, I fully understand finding the information and making it common knowledge is something that we should treasure as a human species I'm on your side in that regard. However, I also see the other side of this in the sense that there are certain things that people with more money have said, no, mine, my rules, do you do what I say? Or there have been people in the past who have created certain uh, societal norms about certain things that if you push against them, you are going to get a societal push back. It's either financial or societal in that regard. I'm over generalizing because there's pro there's definitely layers to that but the reason why there's a lot of things that don't happen in, in terms of research is oftentimes money and sanctioning because if you go out into the middle of the ocean and just say hey this is mine for an x amount of time the people who actually own that space are going to have issues with that right yeah I see that, and, and I think that's exactly why Graham Hancock is so angry and and negative in his show, because he's constantly running into what you're talking about when trying to learn. And he should be angry about that, but I mean, unless he comes up with becoming a multi-billionaire and is able to joust with entire nations' worth of funds against get doing investigative uh uh, tr troughs through the ocean or doing anything else. There's no way to ratify the information without doing something drastic or uh, maverick esque. Like if you want, if 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 there are young people out there who are really wanting to go ahead and expose this this information, they're not doing it through the channels of government and for. And for that reason, they their stuff will never be recognized as act, as actual uh, fact because it's always hearsay. You're never going to see a video about somebody filming a flying a, a UFO flying through the air and people saying, "Yeah, that's real. Real aliens exist. It's fuck. It's fucking. Uh, it's ratified and everything. This this video um, certifies it." Dude, sorry, I'm they, laughing because. <laughs> They have something those completely bodies. unrelated. Yeah. Sorry, you just they reminded have. me. I was literally outside with my dogs the other day, and some sort of, I think, weird echo in the mountains made like a sci fi UFO noise. And I was like, no, that's just like, looking up in the air. You better get inside. That's not a UFO. That's a skinwalker. You're out in the boonies. So you just need to stay inside for the rest of the night. Yeah. But anyway, a little, a little creepy. There, it's a double standard for a reason because there is literally no way to make this into canon knowledge for everybody without the recognition of the people who are deciding what gets written inside of textbooks. And there is re like unless you are batting one for one for the people who hold the keys to that chapter, 
there is there's no way you can go ahead and ratify this hearing that hearing what you've talked about it's an interesting theory but it's also the same stuff that goes into the whole like uh alien investigations that happen on the history channel that's all great it also sounds like quack craziness because until there is ratified evidence that is fully published and ratified you could go out and touch the alien there's no way you're going to ratify it there's no way. Yeah, but like overall, I, I really don't. To me, the biggest thing is that Ancient Apocalypse brings attention to a very interesting and important subject. And it doesn't matter the delivery as long as it gains popularity, as long as it triggers some new people to investigate, to want to fi- find out more, to push the bounds of our knowledge and I, maybe with some generation i don't think it's this one i also don't know again if that's what it's doing because a lot of the famous things that you see from ancient apocalypse are not people who are willing to think about the narrative that way you have a lot of people that take that and take pieces of ancient apocalypse and then repost it and you have all of these theories that even go further off the deep end and use these same ideas to help further their own story. And the idea of this distrust in science that they push forward allows them to use that narrative in the same way. And it leads to it's theories a, that don't a, even have in science. It's not a distrust in science. The show builds that narrative to me, regardless no, of it, what it, you it, think and regardless of how you experience it. It specifically builds a narrative that is saying that these gatekeepers are gatekeeping. It does not at all say like, that science is throughout is bad the show. Wrong. He points out those gatekeepers as being archaeologists and other scientists. Instead of, like Nat says, what they should be, the people who have the power and money and ownership of these areas, which are not scientists. And they're not the ones. Those are the they're not the archaeologists. How could he talk about them in a negative light? <laughs> well, that's what I'm trying to get at. He and the archaeologists fighting together is a good thing. Because but the, it but they aren't. publicity. But the reason why they got they are. Milo look engaged. At, look, Milo fought him. Go look at how many archaeologists are going and filing suits and complaints and vowing never to be in shows again because how they were misrepresented in Ancient Apocalypse. You have multiple organizations now that are simply not going to look into these things or not going to go and get money from things like Netflix because of how disingenuous Netflix and through it, Graham Hancock were to them. That stuff is not what's important. What's important is Milo himself admitted that the first time he ever learned about an interesting archaeological site was through that show. Yes. And And guess what? Those things aren't going to happen as much. That's the point. But those things aren't going to happen. They're going to happen less and less. You don't know that. They're going to happen more. Look, look at the bad traction that places have had, even from the start of filming. Do you know how many times they turn other places, turn Graham Hancock and Netflix down to show off their historic sites now because of how they handled the, um, the snake uh, the Snake Hill or the the, the Raven Hill. The, um, no, it was a snake. There's a snake on a hill that they wouldn't let them film. At. Yeah, because of how they handled and filmed there anyways and what how they flew the drone over, multiple sites later in the show and later in filming turned them down that they wanted to go to because of how blatantly disre- like they disregarded that. Yeah. Like, the problem is... The ripple effects from that show. I'm sorry. No, I got a question for you. So instead of pushing the bounds of human knowledge, we should respect privacy. No. And wishes. No. No. That's what you're saying. We are. We look. You're you're saying we should. We should respect the wishes of private ownership. There are certain things over. There are certain things you do not tread on. 
right, in society. There are certain words you don't say, right? Yeah. It's the same aspect as this, though it is very much driven by money and power and ownership. It is the same thing. There are certain names you cannot say in open in open society and not expect an immediate repercussion. Like Voldemort. How, yes, exactly. Don't say it. He who must not be named, sir. Sorry. Anyway, back on topic. Let's say you go about this entire process and you are extremely respectful through the entire process and you are not able to gather as much resources as you can. So the only thing that you can present is your research and your findings. Right. That kind of presentation will not garner Netflix's attention. Correct. But it will also allow you to continue doing your research if if necessary. This is not a comment as to how he has done his research. However, he has cut ties for him and people after him for those sites because of the things that he has done for Netflix to be able to publicize a show. Because let's be real. Being able to say that they told us not to do this, so we're going to do it anyway gets views and that makes money am i wrong yeah i mean they should have just used the satellite footage they should have just used the satellite footage but being able to say that you were on site got the drones still flew through and then i'm gonna guess they did some form of walkthrough makes money Netflix is not is not on the and side all of the person is, who made this to go ahead and, and be able to further a, a point. They are there to further knowledge. So as soon as they hear that, hey, the people that we want to continue to make money with say that we can't go ahead and associate with this narrative again. Fine. Let's go ahead and continue making this ball roll and and make sure it never hits a stop because I, I, I'm going to say this as kindly as possible. These ideas are great. But in the grand scheme of being able to publicize it, they don't give a single, and Eric, bleep this out, they don't give a single fuck. Uh, they don't. Making my editing work hard here. What are we doing? It's, I, I gave you full oh. warning. It, honestly, I'll click it into. They don't give a single uh, fuck. So I, and, and I say that all the love of my heart. It's not, it's not like, it's not a dig it towards you. It's more so a comment as to how information and education works in our society as a whole. This is not something that's unique to America. This is in, this is worldwide being able to say that you are furthering the continual uh, zeitgeist and knowledge of the human race has never been and will never be the objective of a capitalist mindset. Yeah. Do, yeah, and I the, don't have a mic, but I I, I have uh, an ear I have an ear pod. And I, the thing that I the there's only <laughs> one other thing which is that I was just trying to say all publicity any type of publicity is good publicity. Lies. So it's just awareness brings more action eventually have you seen the tab in the short term but have you eventually i the entirety of and, the, the entire existence of possibly either X, giants and or sasquatch has com- been made completely irrelevant through the use of tabloids any form of uh uh up and coming like possible uh src rating character uh, creatures that live within our society completely cartoonized there is literally video games about the capture and holding of certain objects because they cause create uh reality to warp and people play them ad ad hoc ad nauseum so that they can desensitize from the world as if it's not reality that's like ufos and and in sasquatch We're, we're talking about a genuine Field of study, Anthony. They're the that same been, thing for that us. Has been, I'm speaking from you on the other side of the window. They're the same thing. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that archaeology has been given the boot. Like it Absolutely. needs to gain in popularity. That's Absolutely. all I'm getting at. Is Absolutely. it needs 
more eyes so that people think, oh, this is worth doing because we in our educational system are led to believe that we, we just know this. There's no reason to go exploring in that field anymore. No one should be curious about this because we have the answers. And what they're doing is showing, actually, we, we might not. There's some things here. This you can't dispute. We should reconsider and look into it. I don't disagree with anything that you've said. The only thing that I do disagree with is how you feel as if it's been betrayed within this Netflix show and how you feel capital, how organizations I don't, should go about. I don't care that. how it was portrayed. All I care about is that it brought more awareness and more intrigue and more minds into that field. I don't like, I don't like the word intrigue because intrigue is used to go ahead and sell for, for profits. I don't think education should ever be uh, monetized. Education should be free and it should be something that's encouraged across all mediums. So I, I get intrigue. I, I, I want facts. I don't want a scientist to come up with a backlight showing him his body as a shadow and him saying night fell on my crew. No, Dude. come to the stage. Okay. Present okay. this shit like you are in front of ne- like I, I know I know it's not like a direct equivalent, but step in the front like you are giving a uh, presentation for NASA, and you're like, "This is how space works." No a- one will watch that. You B- can't see. You can't improve the popularity of a boring subject that way it doesn't then work why, people have been doing it for decades people who continue to say that like in terms of like a space program they will follow launches in, into into the ether they will continue to buy patches visit locations and talk about the histories of a space that's, program i'm i'm trying that's actively to do- happening It's actively happening. That's the thing. You're talking about something that is pushing the bounds where people are being told, you know, we're looking to the future. We're we're reaching for the stars. We're pushing humanity forward. That has already hit what things like archaeology and exploring the earth we have don't get. Because it's not grounded in reality for us. Because we've been told that we already know everything. There's no point. Because it makes no money. We're back to the beginning. It makes no money. Yes, it does. The point is to bring publicity to it. Rockets are freaking great, dude. Rocks are not. I I'm not saying that there is a there is not a possibility for you to find a way to make archaeology interesting for society as a whole this the way that they are portraying it in netflix now is not the way to do it i and the questions do need to be asked i haven't even seen the show i won't be because i've already heard about what they've done with how they've interacted with some of these sites and for some people that's sensitive stuff we do not know the entire history of the world in terms of even like the the current generation. There are things that have happened in the Philippines that my wife knows that I will never know. And if we ever step to a location and she tells me, I have no frame of reference. So when I I'm, I'm going to guess that this this is a man, right? Whenever they step onto a site and their immediate action is to. D is to go about and go against what they have been told by either the locals or by the governmental body there because of, of X or Y without any form of rhyme or reason then continues to do so. My issue is not with the society. My issue is with the interloper who has come in and says that I'm going to do what I please to go ahead and make sure that people know you can, I don't think reaching and taking information like this and then cutting and then not being able to, without a doubt, ratify this information as fact is fair to future generations. But it's not a science show. It's not. And, and that doesn't get people's attention. 
it's just I'm saying in, be able in, to ask questions. I'm saying in equation to something that is scientific, it's still getting less traction. And what? Anything else that's science based. You're saying that this guy is not a scientist. He claims over and over again that he is not a scientist. He's just encouraging that people investigate. That's the writer. That he's a writer. If you are trying to convince a entire populace to continue to investigate and know more, probably shouldn't go about it by creating a, a show that depicts these questions that need to be posed on top of, hey, by the way, these questions that we were able to extrapolate by visiting this location, you can't go there anymore. So you'll have to find those questions elsewhere and investigate on your own. I don't know about you, but I, I, don't, I don't go to Netflix and know what show I want to watch on any day because choice paralysis is a real motherfucker sorry so you're asking people in this current society who are doing all the things that they're doing and are exposed to all the things that is that are going on in the world right now to go outside dig into a hole and be like hey i'm gonna go ahead and figure out what's actually going on oh. that's not that's not how you do it that's it not how you do it the thing is, it's been proven that the more someone is educated, the less creativity the, in, in our modern educational system, the way it works, the less creative they become. They literally lose their capability to think outside the box. And so if you go and you get your archaeological degree and you listen to all of these facts mm -hmm. as if... There's no way they could be wrong. You yourself just will not question it. And and then you enter the it's a you enter the nocebo effect where it's the opposite of placebo because you believe that this isn't possible, you can never prove that it happened. Do you feel you like he is proposing a do you feel like he is proposing a efficient model for them to find that information? What do you mean? Do you feel that what he is doing now is, an, is a solid and proven model for them to continue doing the investigations moving forward? I think it's odd to assume that because of what they're filming, that it has any effect on I'm, I'm, stri I'm stripping away the film. People trying I'm, just to saying, I'm, say, I'm, stripping away the, I'm say, stripping away the film. Do you feel that what he is doing now is going to be an effective way to go about finding out the, the truth in the future? I think what he is doing now is an effective way to raise awareness and bring more people's attention to something that is worth learning about. That's just gaining more attention. Will it give a proper model for them to present information that is true and be, be able to be reportable to the scientific world and be able to say what you believe is wrong and this is factual. It's not an educational series that that doesn't make any sense. It's that's they are but not you're asking trying them, to do but that. But so he's that asking them to go even... on an educational avenue that he's asking them to find truth which is in itself a way of educating oneself about what's true about the world right so what is what is the actual goal of ex of exposing this way of ex exploring the the universe and taking this model and basically saying hey i want you to continue asking because to be real he's posing a pot a way to go ahead and investigate and he is saying we should ask questions. We can we should continue to go about and expect and see think that these things are questionable, which is which as a science overall is valid. But in the way that he's doing it, is is anybody's information going to be valid? Because what yeah. he's doing already right now is not valid. Or else he's he not, would be able to state without, without deniable proof that what he's doing is true. 
he's literally presenting, hey, here's an area. Here's what we think we know about it. Here's what we haven't looked into. We should look into that. So that is valuable. Like but there's the no first data episode. to it. Okay, let, let, me, let me make a comparison. There is a man from Sweden. He, is, he has been on the side of re-farming uh, the ocean, basically rehabilitating it. And what you do is you take the red sand from Africa that blows over the ocean anyway, and you purposely uh, place it within certain deposits over the ocean, and it effectively repopulates the coral, which then feeds the fish, and so on and so forth. And he has data to show that in the small cultures that they have done it, the, the ocean has bounced back from the uh, bleaching that has happened, and they have created thriving cultures of actual barrier reefs. That's data. Right? Mm -hmm. Does he have a process, or not even a process, does he have irrefutable evidence after what he has done through this entire piece that has proven that's that this is what we have what we know right now needs to be investigated because it is it is wrong to the point where we need to find out what's actually happening yeah in the first in the very first episode they use ground penetrating radar to to show that there are chambers underneath a large structure which the people that built the structure likely had access to whether they were made by lava tubes or the people themselves doesn't matter because if they had access to it there could be ancient evidence to prove whether or not they were there long ago you said could yeah does he have it he's not allowed to dig so he's not allowed to dig. So the and so what he is doing is saying, "Hey, look, we should be allowed to dig here to find out, but we're not allowed to. Why? Because they literally won't let us. The show should not exist. Then that doesn't make any sense. You can't say, oh, you know, as long as the people that are in in government and in power say you can't do something." Well, we shouldn't even talk about it. Let's just not do it. Let's not learn. No. No, I'm not saying Dude, that. I'm, that's exactly what, what you're saying, because it's no, what happened. I'm not. What happened was that I will say for this, I don't know where the dig site happened. However, I will say that dig sites just in general are usually rife with making sure that this, the culture that they come from is okay with you being there. Was the culture okay with him being there? I don't know. Was the government okay with him being there? I also don't know. I have to assume yes, but there were certain stipulations that they said you could not do, right? If there is a situation where there is no way for you to go ahead and get into this without invasively going into that space, find another way to do it. Because other than being able to say, no, I have more money than you. I'm going to ball harder, harder, harder by the space and find out what's under there. There's really no way to go ahead and find out without having some serious societal issues along with that. Right. The show should, this sh in my opinion, the show should exist. If there is edifiable evidence of sorry, edifiable, that's not a word. Uh, there is evidence that points directly towards this object does not belong in the time period that it has been carbon dated. Right? This object created by man, not a layer of, of strata, object made by a dude has, has some form of microchip in it does, shouldn't exist in the time period that it does. That is proof in my head for me that we should be looking for more. Right? Yeah, I, I mean, he did that with the Obekli Tepe. Obekli Tepe is now the agreed upon, like scientifically factual, oldest um, megalithic structure from a human civilization 
It is literally dated to 12 and a half thousand years ago because it was buried intentionally. And Milo goes to debunk the... So a Graham's idea is it was buried because they knew there was an impact and they were trying to preserve it from the impact. Milo says that the rock is actually really soft and it erodes very fast. So they probably buried it in order to preserve, preserve. it from the rain. You know, honestly, both of them could be right in a way because... I think the location of it is like the opposite of where the impact was. The impact was somewhere in North America and would have created like torrential rain because of all the uh, glacial water being spewed into the atmosphere. So it's not, it's like not impossible that maybe there wasn't rain there and they didn't, you don't know how old those rocks are because they're rocks. You can't carbon date them. You carbon date the crap that people buried it in. So it's like, you know, the Sahara used to be a lush forest, but now it's, it's the Sahara. Gotcha. A so it's like we don't know if they buried it because they knew or had just incurred a, ca a catastrophe on the planet or if they buried it because like Milo said it was already raining there and it was already eroding but yeah that, I mean that's already pushed back like before Gobekli Tepe was unburied we thought that like the oldest megalithic structure by man was like three to five thousand years ago not twelve and a half thousand years ago wait a second wait a second wait a second wait a second, wait a second. Wait a second. are we arguing that old stuff is actually spoke could actually be older and that's it like it's really not actually like a, so, actually like a, make a, like technologically advanced civilization are we saying like Somebody was rubbing sticks a little bit earlier than they actually were, or the are biggest, we saying like people are people have been like people were fucking the, doing crazy stuff before? The overarching theory is that before twelve and a half thousand years ago, there was an advanced globe-spanning civilization that actually that's I don't know if that's necessarily the case. What what they say what he tries that to is exactly say, his hypothesis like word no, for word. Stop. It is not. It is a hundred percent. I watch both shows. Look it up. I watch Look both shows. That's Use exactly Google. how he puts it. Use Google. Do it. Uh, Use Google. I want you to search it. Oh my God. Uh, oh but he's, he's coming back with a with a he might. He, he'll probably come back with the book. I don't know. Okay. Oh, he has a book. But uh, for uh, Graham Han Hancock has written a number of books. Okay. Okay. On the subject. Gotcha. 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 Okay. So cool. Anyway, <laughs> I will oh. say it's kind of it is kind of unfortunate though that I think that while Anthony's narrative would be really nice, I think even if this does add a lot of intrigue and add a lot of eyes looking at archaeology, no one else but Graham Hancock has a son who's a senior manager of the originals uh, unscripted division on Netflix. So I don't think a lot of other... Or for, unfortunately, I don't feel that a lot of other people are going to get a chance at being able to do something like Graham Hancock has done. And that's kind of sad to me because I wish we gave more opportunities for like people to go and study these things. You and didn't ignore that I'm back. No, you're back. <laughs> I had to be really bad and Eric oh. keep on monologuing and, and, and continuing his horrible interruption of me trying to get what I was saying straight. Well, once you left, okay. I had to fill the radio time, man. I, like, you didn't give me a choice. That's fine, but you're not acknowledging you that I've been say, back for like an you hour. Say, you you're didn't right. say BRB bio. We didn't know why you had left. I couldn't get what a you, word out. I couldn't we, get a word out. And I've had to pee really bad for a really long time. We thought well, we were. Now, now, now that you've taken book. care of that. Continue, now, I, I do feel like point. I need to go and rewatch that Netflix show just to get a better understanding of everything. Because I watched it a couple of years ago when it came out, and then I watched the debunking. The thing is, because I've watched many other interviews with people like uh, the actual scientists. I can't remember their names, but some of them were interviewed and, and have, as y'all have mentioned, come out and said, like, yeah, I said those things, but I also said other things. And, like, they just took what they wanted to say. 
aside from all that, the idea is that human civilization was advanced enough to know that an impact was coming. And it wasn't necessarily the entire globe like we are now. It was just there's advanced people that know things are coming. And so some things may have been set up that are like, if you look at it, it perfectly lines up with these exact stars, which dates them, right? There's like stuff like that. That's like the Mm -hmm. pyramids, right? And then the theory is that right after the impact, you know, there was like a thousand years of awfulness from like 12 and a half to 11 and a half thousand years ago. The world was terrible to live in, completely reset. Mm -hmm. There's the, there's commonalities and a theory that there were some people that, you know, passed on a knowledge and survived through it. And they went to these different civilizations and taught them how to do X, Y, and Z. And you can see in certain, uh, you know, there's hieroglyphs and, and, and stone carvings at these places where there will often be guys that have like, a bag of something like they're they're just like why why does each one of these you know in south Africa, or south america and and in asia or wherever they are, they are why, why why do they all depict someone with a bag did literally some people survive in like a bunker try to pass down some knowledge for a thousand years and then go and help human civilization start back up faster than it did before we got reset that's possible because in the past 12 and a half thousand years we've done a lot true and maybe we had a little bit of help maybe they were like okay stop just hunting and killing and 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 gathering as you go plant this look at these animals put a fence around them okay you know like it's not impossible it's not impossible it's It's an intriguing thought. It's just very niche. And the traction that is going to be necessary to find any form of actual answers is going to have it have to evolve from a very niche topic to a very general topic. And the biggest problem is it would like most of it would be gone or underwater because it's like 80 meters underwater now. Erosion. Yeah. Yeah. And like the biggest thing, the one of the sayings i love the most is in the past eight generations we have advanced to an insane degree right yeah it's it's actually like we are moving in hyperspeed right now yes now we have proven that eight thousand generations ago humans were exactly as we are now the brain the body the exact same you could literally see me walking around just with different clothes so in 8,000 generations, nothing happened. We, we didn't, you know, go the Pandora route in the Avatar uh, movies where we were more like we were advanced to a degree, but we didn't like. Th- so I need to see what it, man. It? We need People, to see it. We there's a lot of agreement it. that right now our science is very advanced and our I can't. Something else is very advanced, but what isn't advanced is our, like, spirituality. Basically, our appreciation for the Earth and those around us and and not damaging things. Our body and, and so, left brain are real good, but our right brain is pretty bad. Yeah, and so it's like, what if over 8,000 generations, humans gradually advanced all three aspects of civilization instead of... Oh, our science and whatchamacallit took off really fast, possibly because some really old guys that survived or passed down ancient knowledge set us up for success in one way, but didn't set us up for success in the other. So you're but saying I'm aside, smart because an old man with a bag had maybe had horizontal shif- shuffle maybe. With, with, you know, a, with a prehistoric woman. You know, with all that said, I actually got Eric to watch one of the best movies and most important movies of our modern generation. It's called the Barbie movie. I heard about this. I heard the and, discussion in in behind uh, B's. Uh, I think it was B's story 
I heard a bit of a of a dis- debate happening after the video after the movie. Oh yeah, there was a long conversation between Eric and I after the movie, oh. and then that dude, continued. you should have left with the Barbie movie. This would have been such a more interesting topic. This made my head hurt. okay. Continue it's Barbie just movie. The order of the things. Barbie, the Barbie movie. The Barbie Barbie movie. movie. Eric, Eric helped me realize why the Barbie movie is so important, and it is so important because it is a good comedy that really highlights like the disparity in the uh what is it not equality necessarily but you know sexism basically disparity in the sexes yeah yeah and and it's so interesting when you just watch the intro and you're like huh did barbie oppress women and yeah. was that intentional cuz that's what we're getting right now like you know it's yeah. like it was is the original is, intent was not but yeah 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 but it it I is, thought it was a great movie. Eric thinks it's average. Yeah, it is. <laughs> shut up, Eric. Shut your shut your whole mouth. What are we talking shut, about? Shut your entire mouth. I'm about to call Mel into this. It room. was it was better <laughs> than it had <laughs> any line. right being. A hundred percent better than uh-huh. it had any right being. And by the way, why does it not have a right to be good, Eric? It's Eric? a sh- it's a show about a toy line. It no, like, it's not. It's not about a toy, line, about a toy line. You missed the whole thing. It's about equality. No, it's about sexism. You're, you're missing the point. Barbie, Barbie is the vehicle for the for the yes. actual concept. Yes, a hundred percent, hundred percent. And it is better if you slap Barbie on something and call it the movie and give no other context. You're going to think movie about a toy line, which this is not. I agree with you. I 100% am more bored uh, with what y'all I are also, saying. I also, I also agree that this is a movie about a toy line. But it's about a lot of things. It's yeah, about yeah, a lot yeah. Of yeah. But, but yeah, all right. I'm getting at is that if you were to come in and just say, ah, it's a movie about Barbie, like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, what are we talking about? What is this movie going to be about? Like, are they just going to, like, have Barbie go through <laughs> the modern era? Like, we don't know. And to that degree, it is horse. so much better than that. Horse, it is so much Aaron. better than that. I, yeah. Look, I get you. Horse. I'm with you. I'm just, I'm just saying. That's okay, why I your, said. What are, your criti- what are your criticisms? I want to hear the criticisms. Oh, it is just not a, a, a movie for uh, that has comedy and story plots that I typically like from any movie. Okay. Generally, it is not a bad movie. I even said to Anthony, I think it was phenomenally done, and the detail oriented, like. What they did to make that movie a like good from a technical standpoint was amazing. It just wasn't a movie for me. I just typically don't like those types of movies, no matter how good they are. You and didn't so it laugh was at Sublime. You didn't laugh at Sublime. I laughed at one line in the entire movie, and Anthony can attest to this. And that was when they were like, the narrator came on and were like, the if they really wanted to prove this point, they probably shouldn't have gotten Margot Robbie to play this part. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I laughed at that one line. That was literally the only time I laughed throughout the movie because that was the only line that I, I genuinely was like, holy shit, that's pretty funny. <laughs> like Anthony, make eye contact with me right now. Get closer. Eric's a little too cerebral for that movie. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%. <laughs> Look, I'm going to okay. be real. Nobody should come to me for film advice because I had to watch and do film for college. Like I've had to nitty gritty analyze films and I have become entirely numb (sighs) to movies that are fun in general. This isn't just a fun movie. This is a movie (laughs) that is made to impact society. It is made... Okay, comedy that is the minimum is bar the for an norm. okay movie for me. No, Eric, stop. No, not comedy. all movies make impacts, dude. God's comedy minus one does not always make. Oh, impact. but I can't wait Sorry, to see that Anthony, movie. I'm so excited Anthony, for go, that. Anthony, go ahead. Go ahead. Comedy is like the best medium for advancing society and addressing and bringing up issues that we aren't talking about. An approachable and media. An approachable medium. I agree. Yeah, and that's what it did. It it, did. it brings it up. I agree. It, and, like, and it's perfect timing because right now a lot of us probably the guys i mean mm-hmm. think that oh we're doing a good job we're, yes, we're doing a good job everything's doing better now right and then you go and watch the movie and you're like i never thought of that oh oh 
that's oh. that's bad yeah. That's really I hope bad. we're not doing that. And then you go to work and you're like, shit, we're doing that. And you make a change and people improve the world. This movie is improving the world. It's a it's great, great movie. It's a great movie. It's not average. It's a great it's movie. It's doing the work we need. Eric, this and movie you're has, wrong. Eric, this movie has it's not just a random comedy. It should not have been should not have been together. It has done the work necessary to go ahead and make sure that people mm. have been separated. If I'll be real, me and me and my wife are on the same page on how we feel about this movie, so we're we're good. You listen here, B. <laughs> you listen here. You listen good. I know you're watching this clip right now. You're wrong. You know why? I'm say, I don't believe Eric because she was there and she was quiet. And if she agreed, I think she would have said so. <laughs> There are certain parts of this movie that do not have never existed. Well, no, I can't say never because I I am not a a infallible um, source of movie knowledge. But this has been the most recent and the most direct depiction of the current status quo of societal norms for for relationships and for female existence bar none there is nothing else that has come out in the last 10 years that i can say directly that is how females in reality are living day to day right at least in our country in our country and so i could see that bon v might have a very different uh experience because she hasn't been here yeah, her whole life, but that is not in, in, that is not to knock either of y'all's opinions. You can say that this was a mediocre movie for me. By the way, I didn't and, say and, mediocre movie. By the way, it's a I, great movie. You said it's a great movie. You said I said it. I I yeah. It, I said it was yeah. good. I yeah. when Anthony turned to me and looked no, at no, me, time out, time out. I said. <laughs> Say it. You better say it again. It was not bad. You, that's what he said. It was not bad. That's not saying it's good right now. I said it, wow. it. I said it was not bad. And then we had a long discussion about, okay, but why didn't you say it was okay? Or like, like you're, you're like, I was trying to say like, it was neutral. Was like, I was like, not bad isn't neutral. Not bad is, is negative. You're, yeah. you're starting, you're Ooh, starting negative. It's, I'm literally saying it was not negative. I'm saying I w did not think negatively about this movie. In, brother, the full stop, right brother, out the gate, I said I, you, brother, I, I didn't you. have any negative emotions from this movie. I feel like you should have seen this, but maybe you missed this one. Day 9 goes in depth about not bad when he experiences it with a frat bro. And he's like, that's Same. how they always communicate. They always communicate. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. Like, they're always double negativing everything. I, and he no, goes into I did not how... say it wasn't great. I specifically yeah, I said I misspoke there. it I misspoke was there. not bad. Uh, what I'm positive. getting at is a double negative is not a positive and is not a neutral. I wanted you it to know that I didn't think it was bad. Policy. It, I Eric, that was I served that onto a plate. Anthony, but Anthony, you're both very pretty, so I need you both to listen to me because I need to see your faces. Okay, are you ready? Eric is not going to communicate in a ratifying way about whether or not this movie is as great as we think it is. He probably also thinks in the same way about this movie. And I agreed off, with every let point me he finish, made. Eric, let me finish. I have not, I have not yet begun to fight. Anyway, uh, Eric probably still also allies with the certain messages and uh, themes of the movie. Am I correct? A hundred percent. That being said, Anthony, this is the same. The same man that we have known for 10 plus years at this Seven. point in time. Seven, sorry. Seven I'm plus kidding. years at this point. No, no, point. sorry. No, I, I no. threw a random number out. <laughs> oh. I said 27. I was wrong. Oh, I, I mean, that's, that's really close for us, though. 
yeah. It's it's around eighteen or twenty actually for everybody. No. Yeah. Anthony, no, I, I've, I've known you since no. I was uh, since Six, I was seven. seven. Eh. But Nat was fourteen. I met Nat when I was 15. no fifteen. Yeah, fifteen. Yeah, 15. sixteen years. Sixteen years. So ten plus years. I was right. I continue my monologue, sir. I'm sorry. I just felt anyway, like let me let me put on my suspenders again. Um, Eric is not going to be able to express that the level of hype that we are about this movie because he has other extenuating circumstances towards how he observes movies. Am I correct? 100%. Yeah. Excellent. I'm glad that we've come to a place where we can both understand that, yes, the movie is incredible. Like, you should see it. If you have an issue with watching it, you should really think about what the issue is and why you feel that way and dig deeper into it. If you're not able to, I highly suggest finding a third person that you feel safe discussing those issues, whether it's the therapist or a parent, and delve into those those subjects. Because, honestly, it's the only way that we as society move forward. That being said, if you feel that this movie was ass or bad, chances mm-hmm. are you have a lot of things you were you, you were hating settle. on it for the wrong reasons at that point you were hating on it because you it was pink yeah the <laughs> only the only valid criticism really of this movie that you could even begin to make are that the comedic elements didn't match what you like about comedic elements but to say that the story didn't I think it's funny, progress it, it, correctly it, or let like him cook, let him cook to say that <laughs> like you didn't like how the character's journey went throughout the series, like the movie, like that's, that's just wild. They did a great job at yeah. telling that story, dictating it, how it needed to be dictated. And then matching up the music the, the details that they Dude. put into like making everything accurate in that i i will oh, say wow. i told anthony this too right after we finished it is my wait, favorite wait, wait. no 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 i wanted to say that uh, i wanted to say that oh my god go for it go for it no, no, I, no, I give it slow. eric's oh my god the best thing he said was that's my favorite will ferrell movie oh my god or, or no, 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 sorry. It was. I think it was. That was the best Will Ferrell movie I've ever seen. <laughs> I did say that. Accurate, accurate to a T. Will Ferrell gets better with age. He is like bourbon. He is like no. wine. He is like wine. He is like. Dude, That's he true. Just I used to hate Elf. Better. I now like it. No, you like it. Uh, no, you know I, 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 like I, I have walked out on every Will Ferrell movie I've seen in a movie theater. And you stayed in this one, so he gets That's better. Because it was like I, I didn't age. have a choice, really, to be fair. It was over halfway through yeah. the show, and he couldn't get Eric, out. You yeah. were not going to walk out of this movie. No, 100%. Up. I wasn't going to. but Exactly. So it's a great world fair. He thought about it. And he gets better with age. This wasn't. Uh, I'm, hey, I'm he, saying. I, if, I will not take any 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 dillying or dallying on this. <laughs> so... so yeah, Barbie was a great movie. Thanks, yeah. Anthony. Now for that I'm picking up an hour piece of this podcast, I was going to say your shows. Oh, no, Eric, no, 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 like no, 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 <laughs> I want to go home. You, that just you tells are you home. how intriguing ancient apocalypses are for it, people. Oh, Anthony, I'm going to have words for you tomorrow. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and let's, Eric, what do you got? Okay, so the only thing that I would say from a show perspective is that I, I had to have an internal debate of whether or not episode... Uh, is it five? I'll have to get the episode number. Whether or not this scene from episode five in solo leveling is as good as episode 19 in Demon Slayer. It's a toss up. You know, episode not. 19? It's not. It's not. Dude, that scene Dude, was so dope. Episode 19 of Demon Slayer is 
uh, a moment in time for that generation. I'll be real. It's I'll like, be real. It's, I it's think like saying for us, that's where I landed. I landed okay. on episode 19 still being my favorite yeah. scene, but I think so far solo They're leveling doing. episode five might be second place. They're Man, that hard. scene was dope and i'm not going to give anything away i know anthony you know, hasn't started it yet i don't think we're not going to talk about it much more because for me maybe it will actually be one of the best because for those of you that don't know after knowing eric for 20 something years i have been cursed with his hype manness. oh he does it i actually oh, it's yeah. disgusting. I, I didn't know it was the term he did this to me and my wife demon slayer is one of our favorite animes of all time he hyped up the episode 19 so much that we're watching it and we're like ready for to see God or something. And you know, it didn't deliver. Wow. And I know that it was really good. He's tripping. But it didn't live up to the hype. Anthony. He's tripping. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Because when I watched it, I literally jumped out of my chair. Dude, me too. And I said, let's fucking go. I, I <laughs> look after I watched episode 19, the very first time I, I like, I turned off the episode and instantly I was like, I, I have to think about this. I have to go back and catalog and think about anime as a whole, because this scene was so much better than almost any other scene I had seen. Hmm. It was so much better that I had to look back and be like, is there anything in anime that's good, really? Like, is there anything that matches up with the music, with the emotions, with the character development, with the, like, the progression into the failure, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so good. It was such, and here's the thing, that whole episode and how they deliver it from the first scene all the way to the very last scene is super special. Hmm. And to be fair, that was I I after I watched Solo Leveling episode five, I was like, ah uh, no, okay. Was it better than episode 19? <laughs> Let me <laughs> think about so this for good. a second. Yeah, yeah. And on one hand, I was like, no, this was truly just one scene. It wasn't an episode. It didn't <clears throat> It didn't have a story. Yeah. It didn't have a story backing the entire event. Exactly. But yeah. it was so well done from how they executed it. And here's what I will say. Episode 19 in Demon Slayer from the manga feels really good. It mm -hmm. feels just as good as the show. The show just delivers it. No, no, no. It does not. It does not. Go, sorry i'm so sorry continue i feel like episode 19 of the anime truly goes in and makes it takes what was in the manga and just does it the best way solo leveling for episode five this one scene i feel that the anime objectively makes what is it i feel a very average scene in the manga not a highlight of the manga, but an average scene and turns it into something special. It is one of the few instances where I think the anime not only did justice to the source material, but lifted it up and said, every moment of this anime should be special. Yeah, absolutely. And that is not something that I feel episode 19 in Demon Slayer did. I feel like Demon Sl that. Episode 19 just made it the best version of what the manga could be. Because if you read through the whole manga, episode 19, what happens in the anime, what happen when it happens in the manga, it feels like one of the high points of the entire manga because mm -hmm. of what happens. Mm -hmm. This scene in the manga for solo leveling, you, you will brush right through it. It, it, it really doesn't feel that different. It doesn't yeah. feel elevated. But it, the anime takes it and says, this... Is, means is a big something deal. yeah it's a big and it, deal and it feels like it punches so much harder in the anime and again it just leads me to another case where i am just kind of it's super saddened that the creator of that manga doesn't get we'll to see, see this, Man, this anime Ooh, I'm and that's that's it. so saddening because i think he would be super proud of that episode and i Dude, think he'd be 
stoked, but he'd also be exhausted from working on his next series that he's doing right now. What do you mean doing right now? If he was still alive, do you oh. think he'd probably oh, yeah. still be writing? I was like, Absolutely. Matt, I don't want to give you this bad news. <laughs> you know? No, yeah, I know. Yeah, I have yeah, to yeah. stop. Don't do that to me. I know. Don't, don't try and know. don't got to try to relegate me to oh, the shadow no. realm with oh, your no. with your news. Anyway, um, I was gonna say with your uh, perspective of the episode nineteen as compared to the chapter that exists within Demon Slayer, I don't see the chapter itself ever getting to the hype level of that episode no 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 and that's not what i'm saying and, okay, i think okay i'm more okay. saying just, just that if sure. you yeah. if you lined up a hype meter across the manga storyline and across the anime storyline epi- the thing that happens in episode 19 both goes up right like that's a high point for the anime and the manga right yes they both go up yes correct yes correct Yes. The anime does it way more and much better. Yeah, like they, they spike yeah, it. Yeah, they spike they it even it. higher. In solo yeah. leveling, that bar is like straight for this chapter in the manga, right? Yeah. yeah but in no the anime, it's, it's like, like boom. Yeah. yeah and it yeah, goes yeah. up, and you're like, okay. They okay. really just like pulled that on a average scene in this manga. Like they really it just makes like you think about what they're gonna do for the other. Scene. Yes. It makes me think about how much care and effort they're going to put into the scenes that do matter. Yeah, because we're getting, I mean, we're not too terribly far away from like the big pivot. Because right now I think... uh, no, 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 no! Don't, don't, no, 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 don't give anything. Have you, have you read? No, he it, hasn't. He knows you nothing. Read? You can't, you can't give him I any can, information. I can, I can allude to this. I can at least allude oh. to it. There is a, there is a point where Sung Jin Woo goes from. What? Oh, okay. For those of you that are only listening, I just discovered that Discord has reaction buttons, and they go nuts oh, no. on your like screen. Yeah. I am so sorry. Now I'm clicking all of them so that we know. I hate yeah. you oh. so much. <laughs> there is a that just completely derailed. Woo, it did. Yeah. It derailed the conversation real quick. <laughs> it there is a moment when Sun Jin Woo goes from like, "Oh, you're like a problem," to like, "Oh, you're like a serious fucking problem." This is like there is a there is a there is a ceiling that is removed. Yeah, that's all I'll say. Can't wait. Like, like Can't you feel wait. as if there is this uh, there's, the ceiling has already been removed. There is another ceiling that is removed. They're just like, well, I don't. I like if ever there is an anime comparison of saying like, hey, what team of characters would win against what? And Sung Jin Woo is on one side. I am immediately picking that side because 100%. there is nothing you can do to this man that it will change my mind. That you can, there's nothing you can say to me that will change my mind. No. Oh. Oh, like end, end of chapter Sung Jin Woo. That like, actually makes sound, by the way. Yeah, I actually heard applause. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anyway, Anthony, any continue. Shows, Anyways, yes. For those of you that uh, were wondering why I wasn't talking, I was exercising the ability to not listen because I want to watch the show and I don't want to be overhyped. I want to be able to enjoy it. I don't think I've overhyped you, though. No, because I didn't listen. Okay, fair. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's literally, I don't remember the details, but there's like a thing where if a friend tells you how awesome something's going to be, they will give you so much dopamine that because they're, they're giving, yeah. y- you can't, you can't re-reach that. You expect yeah, it to get sense. more dopamine than your friend gave you, but because you're in person and it's your friend and they're having a great emotional yeah. reaction, yeah. a show can't meet it. And that's what happened with episode 19. So those of you that are hype men, like our great man, Eric, I mean, I'm one too, I'm sure. If yeah, your you friend, if you really saw something absolutely incredible and they haven't seen it yet and you want them to experience what you did, you gotta act like it's no big deal. You gotta be like, yeah, yeah it's pretty like, watch dude, it. it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. Do you gotta yeah. do what Nat does? Watch it. Yeah. You gotta watch use the it. eyes. Watch it. Watch it. Yeah. Don't trigger their dopamine. Trigger their watch oh it. beer. It's really good. Watch it. Oh, I need to watch that. But y'all reminded me. Uh, we started rewatching the Boo Saga of Dragon Ball Z Kai because my wife and I have been looking into um, Dragon Ball Z tattoos. Oh, yeah. nice. Nice. So that's been enjoyable. Nice. Okay. The Boo Saga is 
Something. Pretty good. You should watch yeah. it. Beast Saga? Yeah. I like the Beast Saga. Except for the beginning. I feel but, like this entire podcast would just boil down to us being like, you know, it's pretty good. You should watch it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or, hey, man, this is pretty good. You should drink it. So, <laughs> yo, I, I'm going to add my hate Beast back. Um, if you haven't watched Castlevania yet, get on that shit because it is. It's on the, it's on the list. It's on fire. the list. When we get an fire. opportunity where it's on the list, we're going to watch it. To Camilla and f- oh my god. Anyway, I'm back. Let's see. Um, so Anthony, Eric, do you have Eric? Do you have anything else before I go ahead and give my show? I I will say. Um, so two of my favorite shows, or two of my favorite movies, are Scott Pro- Scott Pilgrim and Baby versus Driver. Yeah, Scott Pilgrim oh, versus great. the World. Yeah. And Baby Driver. Both Baby Driver done. is a good movie. If you have not seen that. Oh, I love Baby Driver. They go back and forth for being my favorite movie. They're both done by the same director. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. And they are... Now, yeah? I think I must share what Eric shared with me before I watched Baby Driver, because thanks to him sharing it, I paid attention to it. Mm. The craziest thing about Baby Driver is how perfectly the sound like the music and whatnot the scoring lines up everything like everything everything. yeah this the like it's a it's a reverse musical it's where the instrumentals are actually playing out the story and so the director edgar wright does a wonderful job on both of those movies he's my favorite director i'm biased but they just started the animated series for scott Pilgrim. program yeah and they got all the original actors and actresses. Mm-hmm. I have finished only one episode so far, or maybe mm-hmm. two, maybe two, two episodes, two mm-hmm. episodes. I finished two episodes. I'm, I, I think I have too much love for the original, but so far I am underwhelmed. You are not even wound. He's underwhelmed. Oh man. Oh, man. I don't you know just how I me, feel though. yet. Because I don't think we talked about this. We we didn't have like a show segment many episodes ago. Yeah. yeah. If you want what you're saying to happen the right way, if you like the Percy Jackson, the new Percy the new Jackson, Percy I've Jackson, heard is amazing. Go, yeah. They, I haven't they, watched they, it yet, but I've heard it's amazing. There's some things that they change, like they just mm-hmm. it, it's completely different, but it's good. Okay. And then there's a lot of things that are exactly as you'd want them to be. It is. It was really good. I'm sad yes, that it, Riddick, we love you and we miss you. Mm. Yep. <sighs> and he plays. He plays Zeus, by the way. I know. Wait, he's gone. Yeah, he's passed away. Yeah, yeah he passed away like like early. Yeah. No, late last year. Yeah. Yeah, it was March seventeenth. 2023 amazing voice yeah Yeah, march 20 uh march 17th 2023 60 years old damn he looked Um, young dude he was incredible yeah he he had i thought he might be 40 at most uh he had a a heart disease unfortunately sucks man yeah uh, so really in case you so so my friends know but i uh i don't like pay attention to any news at all so i'm often surprised by Uh, it sucks We won't get to see him in any more John Damn Wicks. It. We won't get to see him in any more. Um, I think he was dead voice in acting the last roles. One. John Wick. Um, I don't remember. Was he dead? All I know is I John Wick know. movies are great, but they've blurred into just the word "great" for my brain. Like I just I feel know like they're just okay. I feel uh, like they're airplane movies. I feel like one is really so good. amazing. Uh, and two and three were okay. But the real question is, how do they compare to the Boondock Saints? I mean, Boondock... Guys, I'm going to give my opinion on my freaking shows. You shut the fuck go up. Go for it, go for it, go for it. God. What have you been watching, Nat? Anyway, trying to go ahead and go out on another tangent after you've freaking gotten two and a, almost two hours out of your own content. You shut your face. <laughs> Anyway, um, I don't really have a show that is out right now. There is a show that is coming out. It is called Shogun. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it, it. Oh, no, I have two shows. Sorry. I have Shogun, which is, I believe. And let me go ahead and pull it up so I know uh, butcher the names. But Hiro, Hiroyuki Sanada 
and uh, Cosmo Jarvis, and as well as Anna. Anna, what's her name? Oh my God, Anna Sawai. Yep. They are doing a rendition of the Rise of a Shogun. Uh, I don't have the actual synopsis at all. I literally heard about this yesterday, and I was like, "Bet, hard bet!" Like, you're gonna tell me you're gonna do? Go ahead and tell me a samurai story. Only he's gonna eventually become a shogun. Let's go. Oh. So that's my next show. Whenever it comes out, I don't even know the date that is coming out, but I'm pretty sure I bookmarked it into my calendar because February it 27th. In the calendar, it doesn't work. Yep. February 27th. My birthday. Literally like. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Tuesday. And and then um, I also have Ninja Kamui. I don't know if you guys have heard of anything about this anime, but it's I believe it's on Netflix. It's either Netflix or Crunchyroll. Uh, But it is the story is that these this this guy is like bad ninja. Like literally you hire him. Is this a remake of the old one? I don't know. I don't know any history about this again. So if you have heard about it before, it probably is. But he retires and the um, the company that hires him or his ninja sect. I'm not really sure. I'm going to find out. I promise. Listeners, please take pity on me as a poor, uneducated weeb. I'm trying to become a better human being. And it is taking out the time that I can become more of a elder weeb than the minuscule diminutive weeb that i am now the, uh, but for those part of hearing like me what's it called ninja ninja, ninja camu camu not k-a-m-u-i yep k-a-m-u-i and by the yeah. time we air this episode by the way um, i will um i'm working on some overlays so that people can find things better in the the vods yeah, so yeah. we'll I'm we'll sorry. have this overlaid on the screen too so y'all yeah, be able to see it. it why is it on adult swim why is adult swim still a don't thing? worry about it hey hey you f- f- pay attention okay i'm almost done i promise you can go <laughs> The snapping was aggressive. I apologize. Okay, um, dude. Oh god, that's creepy looking. Sorry, it is. I pulled it it up. is like it's not. It, it reminds me of almost of Ghost in the Machine in terms of like the fluidity of the animation in some pieces, or at least like the setting. But it is. It is pretty much a revenge story. Like they come back, they kill his family. They f- they find him. They kill his family, and then they try and kill him. And he's like, oh, bet. And he, it like, it is hit. Like, the rest of the series is him murking the entire sect. Like, that is hit. That's what he's like set out to do. So I was like, ooh, okay. I can, I can watch a revenge story. I mean, I'm down with that. I loved Ghost of Tsushima. So let's go. Right. So <laughs> I have watched the first episode. It is Fire. Well, he's uh, I've watched it in clips. I haven't been able to like sit down and like watch it, watch yeah, it. Yeah, but yeah. I'm I'm stoked about it. It, it looks like they so- have three episodes out right now. No, 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 just two, just two, just the two. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, but I plan on watching that over this over the uh, weekend, and I'll tell you guys how it goes. But it is nice. It is probably the most hype show that I have outside of uh, delicious, uh, delicious and dungeon or delicious dungeon and delicious. Ooh, delicious is that one good? That one good? Uh, yes. Okay. It's, it's not so much funny, but like the food looks great. And yeah, the I food just, looks like, like really surprisingly the, animated. I love the world. It's so good. Like yeah, and, it seems uh, cool. It, it gives me Konosuba vibes, but it doesn't like deliver on the punchlines as hard. Except like they really pick on one character. Konosuba and- also goes off the rails sometimes. Yes. Like, I feel like so, you can't watch that in public. Like, it, it, you're you like, really you're can. like, oh, this is such a funny show. It's such a good comedy. What the, what did they just do? I, what was that I tried scene? To show it to my wife. I tried to show it to my wife and she was like, no, this is Come there. On. There this are parts of it that are the funniest thing I've ever seen in anime mm-hmm. and parts of it that are so cringe. Absolutely. I think so. One scene in Konosuba that I feel like treads the line is like when he's, uh, He's 
he's pretty much giving up on his party. He's like, yes, I'm going to go ahead and become a slave for this person. <laughs> and he's like wrapped up against her. <laughs> and it's revealed that it's not a chick. It's a dude. Oh, my God. Oh, it's man. so funny. <laughs> it's so that, funny. That show is ridiculous. Show is ridiculous. It is so funny. It's so good. But it's so good. It is. It has some moments in it where you have to be like, uh, so, yeah, I definitely think like, it does cringe humor sometimes. Yeah. Sounds like both the uh, the great thing and also the creepy thing about that new Apple Vision. You're sitting next to someone on the plane. You can you can watch whatever you want. But also, what's that person watching next to me? Right. I mean, you already thought that about people who have brought their laptops on computer. Don't 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 act like you didn't look at somebody's browser and be like, oh, okay. Yeah, but now you now you have no idea what they're looking at. All you know is they're sweating, and why are they sweating? It's cold in here. Look, Oof. man, unless you see some <laughs> frantic movement, it's gonna be fine. Okay, the- okay. Let let that man who spent is it five k or thirty five hundred? It's thirty five hundred. Yeah, thirty five hundred. Let that person with four k in the bank say, you know what? I get to watch what I want. As long as it doesn't get in the way of the people around them. I've seen some people who are like, oh, yeah, I'm doing freaking like uh, uh, group calls. And I'm also do, uh, multitasking with other things. I have this keyboard here. All I do is pack my keyboard inside my back, my backpack. And I'm like, that's cool. You also spent almost four grand on a excuse to say that you are no longer associating with the human race for an X amount of time. I like, would love it like for a, a plane ride, though. I mean, I, I'll be, be real. Stick for a plane ride. I'll stick be real. For a plane, ride. plane ride might be the best, best I'd use rent it for of a plane ride. I'd rent it for a plane ride. Oh, that'd be dope. Dude. Yeah. That just remind me of a, there's a great MKBHD, I think, short from an interview where this guy's like, I can't handle it anymore. I, I have to have like a hundred apps to do just communication with people. And then the big one, he's like, I go to the I restaurant and I want to order food. And they're like, oh, you got to scan the QR code. And he's like, what? Like, you can't oh, just yeah, scan the QR code. And he's like, yeah, you got to scan the QR code. Then you got to sign in. And he's like, you're making me take six steps for something that used to just be literally no steps. Like, it's there. It's just, it's, it's in front of you when you sit down. You're- Sorry, man. You're going to have to let that go. That's society. I mean, eventually, I, so my final note on this entire thing is that I hope we eventually get to the point where we reach a solar punk society where we have. You, did you say solar have, punk? Yes. Yeah, solar punk. We, we eventually fuck the world. <laughs> and the people who will survive us screwing this up are like, okay, don't do that. And we really need to go ahead and fix everything that they've done. So instead, let's go ahead and make sure that the technology that we do create is double, uh, has a double function. It does, it services us, but it also embedders the, the, uh, the world. Like you, have you, if you've ever seen art where there's these gigantic plane like things with like that are turbines kind of hanging over these uh, ruins that are kind of semi populated with technological uh, stuff, that's solar punk. And I, I love that aesthetic because I will I love say, the idea of like, yeah. Just to end or kind of wrap up on a brighter note, mm-hmm. I, I, I do some of the meetings for like the environmental defense fund uh, and force that they do. And there are a a bunch of the stuff with like the CCUS. Uh, a real big deal. No, I just donate. So they, they allow you into their like convention talks and they, they, they have like the board meetings and do like all their politician stuff. But I guess take it on the arc. I will say (laughs) one of the coolest things of 2024 is there's a bunch of really neat tech that is actually getting commercialized and used for things like carbon capture. And 2024 is probably going to be the biggest jump in carbon capture technology we're going to have. Um, and most of the next 10 years is actually going to be scaling that up. Hell yes. Rather than like new advancements, it seems like, because it seems like 
a bunch of huge leaps were made in studies, and a lot of that is getting built out this year and actually being put down. So lots of cool stuff in that field, actually, that I've been seeing in my news feeds and talks that I've been able to listen in on. So cool year. There was, there was also a really cool technology thing that I just sent Nat. I sent it to Eric earlier this week because you, you made me think about it with the whole VR thing. Very Ready Player One. Oh, dude, it's yeah, so dope. The Ready Player One thing, this invention from, like, I guess the Disney... The Disney... Uh, the Imagineer. Yeah, the Imagineers. This guy that worked there for, like, 20, 25 years. They invented something where if it gives off a sonic frequency, it becomes slippery. And so you see a bunch of these like hexagonal looking tiles on the floor and they just move objects or they make it to where you're walking in place. And so, yeah, stand up from your chair and the chair gets moved out of your way and you're walking in your VR thing. It's, 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 it's I will say gaming for the boring tech people out there like me, uh, they publish their research paper and the way they make this thing work is so freaking cool. Well worth the reading. Thing? Yeah, they they you can it, it, like Google search There's the hollow tile research yeah, paper. Yeah, yeah. They I did a the patent. Yeah, yeah. It has the research paper and everything with it, and it is just cool. It, it's cool stuff. That tech is unbelievably cool. I like to call that kind of stuff like the um, the uh, Jetson level tech, like Jetson tech. Because oh, yeah. it's, like it's that it's that flying car like crazy like level of experience oh, and, and solution. Let me based, let like, me pitch I wish we something had. that happened in my brain, and, and I don't know whether this is a good idea. But every train system oh, where do they'd this. have standing trains, if you had this as the floor, you would not need support systems there because you wouldn't need to grab onto things because the yeah. friction level could change underneath you to make sure that you stay in place well Dude. your upper body would still want to move backwards it would because physics physics would say that it your would. body still is going to move. it would yeah. but when you so step it, back it would put you back into place so it oh. would it would essentially be able to you'd be able to balance yourself and move I around but brain. keep in I'm place. I'm sorry, you would fall on your ass if that happened. No, because that's how this no, floor works. Your human, your so human body if, would still so, do the same thing, but the the floor would accommodate for your emotions. Yes. So I'm I'm brain. going backwards. So I step backwards. Yes. yes. And then it tries to move me forwards. You're still no, but you're still planted in that foot. Your base does not change yes. where the friction stays. So you are still rooted in the ground. The ground is now keeping you so, rooted, but also moving you. I'm guessing that's what. what, what the happens. funny thing is, if if you start to move backward, you step backward, and it moves your foot back to where it was, you fall. But what you're right about is when that movement starts, all it has to do is move everyone's feet the right amount to where their center of mass doesn't change yes. and then it moves them back so you if you so look down everyone's not, feet are yeah. going to move weirdly and then back while the upper body doesn't move too much it's a little bit of a pendulum if you ever seen yes. a one wheel it's one wheeling you it would briefly. it would be just like the systems they use on oil rig so this system does a lot of what oil rigs do to keep machinery in one place it just does it in a compact friction form and so what would look like it happening like if you look at the oil rigs and there's like there there's a, a piece of machinery right here and then there's a platform the platform will be moving like this and the machinery will not be moving because the machinery is actually moving in the it like contradicting the movement that the the underlying structure is the floor no. would do the same thing or the feet so the the train would be rattling shaking moving and the floor would be counteracting that essentially so so one of the things i love the most about this technology because it's sonar acoustic technology yeah is that the only thing that i have like with my own skeptical brain agreed that might be a lost technology of however many generations ago is that maybe when they like split those stones perfectly, you know, maybe they actually knew like the perfect acoustic proper resonance to hit that one thing with, and then it cut it 
perfectly. Like they didn't actually cut it. They like they ding, just sung to it, and then poof, it cut. Yeah. yeah, they sung to it. Uh, maybe I don't know. I yeah. I know there was that fun little no, resonance, where someone no, picked up a uh, resonance technology rock. is super fascinating because it's the oh. idea that like you like this is all constantly moving with. Uh, uh, matter and any form yeah. of moving matter that's bumping up against something else is causing some form of low frequency sonic anything so if you can harmonize with that yeah what happens like are you everything are you has a natural frequency everything has, everything has a natural frequency so like yeah. what happens when you mess with that it's I fun think I, the, I think I, it's really cool it's like really on the same cool. line i just saw a thing where they they use these certain very well machined metal blocks to measure like depth and they're so well machined that if you take these two separate blocks and stick them, them together, together yeah they stay and twist them mm -hmm. they're stuck mm -hmm. and we don't know why that works yeah. and that's just another one of those things where it's like you know to me if there was an ancient civilization maybe they weren't advanced like we are but maybe they stumbled upon weird shit like that and used it. Maybe they stumbled upon resonance frequencies and used it. You know, that type of weird thing. Yeah, that'd be cool. You know what? Well, now we get to use it for VR. We you know do. What would be cool is you guys liked and sub to the channel. Yes. Please yeah. like, sub. Yeah. It's down in the doobly do. And we have so, a bunch of people watching. I know uh, uh, a bunch of people personally at least that are watching and there's a bunch of people that are new that i don't know that are watching and thank you new subscribers yeah hopefully we likers. can keep making cool yeah. content shorts will continue we have some secret videos coming out soon oh yeah i've got a little preview of that i yeah. can't wait for nat to see it yeah <laughs> nat'll get to see it soon it'll be fun uh, some of this was inspired by like one or two episode ago discussions yeah oh, no. so we got a surprise for you so, coming so we got some fun and, stuff uh, coming down the pipeline and we'll continue posting weekly on friday i know there was like a time where you may have checked the channel and it said sunday i'm no fuck it we're doing it on friday releases are on friday uh enjoy our episode for the weekend at some point we'll probably do it live I think next week we'll be looking at another Flaviar, number two, possibly. Mm, yes, we shall. Did you, uh, did you get your name, sir? Eric? Do you oh, have a name thing? I've, a I'm, I'm, yet, I'm no? up in the air. I've been toying around with the idea of the motif pally. And we'll see if that sticks. Paladrim is another one. Haven't decided yet, but that channel will be on the right. host section, just like when right. Matt does second well, news and puts it on the you two, host channel. You both need to secure your like Twitches and YouTubes, Nat, Nat, Nat. I don't know what you're talking about. You need to secure a singular name like Borderman for the Twitches and the YouTubes and all you them. No, that I when, don't have space in my brain for that right now. The, I will Nat, make time for it. But it, you just, I, you just, you just it, change I, your username. The current, the current space right now does not exist. Nat is a Tap Haven original. Now, just think about this: God, if, you, if you don't, if you don't do it, you're going to become second muse was taken everywhere. Uh, not just second muse was taken no, because I just no. brought it up. So someone's going to take second muse was no, taken. If, you're going to have no, second muse was taken, taken everywhere. No, Anthony. He'll be seventh don't muse. Don't say it. Don't say it. Oh, it. seventh muse. Okay, I thought you were about to bring up his old name that he could switch to, and then you were gonna screw him. No, no, <laughs> and that would no. be taken too. Third through sixth will definitely be taken, and second will definitely be taken. But he seventh might get muse. seventh muse. <laughs> I like forty second. Forty the forty second. Uh, the forty second muse. Isn't that? Isn't that? What's his name's? The uh, Astolfo, not Astolfo, Sacriel. Oh, yeah. Is that Sacriel's thing? I think so. Yeah, well, I, the, the 42nd. Yeah, the 42nd. It's like, no, a, it's like an army theme. Yeah. Thing. I know what you're talking about. I think that is Sacriel. But yeah. with all that said, y'all have a good week. We'll see you in the next one. See you next time. Peace. Bye. Goodbye.